Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here. We are going to kick things off in Stranglethorn with a little bit of a morning afternoon grind <laughs> because I don't really have any ideas on where we want to quest. So that is how we're going to start things out. Hope you guys don't mind. If you have any ideas on where we could pick up some quests that would be at level 4, so I'd love to hear about it. Lael, good morning, my man. Thanks for being here. Blood Sail Buccaneers is still too yeah. high of a level. <laughs> Glad I could help. Uh, I'm going to check and see what level these pirates actually are, because I think the difficulty of this quest is getting to an item or getting to a map. And I don't think the difficulty was with the level of the enemies. I thought the level of the enemies was like 38. Uh, but I'm going to take a look. I'm going to take a look because I don't have a lot else that we can do. One thing I was wondering is that maybe we could go grind rep with the opposite centaur faction. Like we could go to war with the Gelkis and we could start killing them to farm up Magrum rep. That was something that I thought about. Because then at least we can, uh, if we, if we can work this back from hostile to friendly, maybe we could do their quest just for the experience since we already got the items we need from, uh, from the Gelkis quest. Alex, good morning. Thanks for stopping by. I'm contemplating whether or not it would be possible to go to war with the Gelkis in order to do the Magrim quest to get the XP from those. I know we don't really need the rewards. But since we already got the Gelkis rewards, I thought maybe we go to war with them, start killing a bunch, and uh, farm up Magrim rep to get experience from those quests. Oh, these guys are level 41. I, I completely misremembered that, I guess. I thought they were a little bit lower. Jackie Joe, good morning, afternoon, evening to you. Thank you for stopping by. It's going to be another stream where I, I don't really have a lot of big ideas on where we can quest. Yesterday we were lucky enough to have a few in Desolus that were at level with us. But today, you know, we, we have... Yeah, we have a couple of things in Dustwall of Marsh that we might be able to do. What I'd like to hit level 38 first. If we can hit level 38 first, then I wouldn't mind trying that spider quest again, and then maybe thinking about taking on those murlocs. Even though I know the murlocs are going to be heinous. Quest in the Badlands, Alex, that gives a two-handed mace. This seems like a good place to be. Uh, level 35, level 35, level 38. Level 35 here. 37 and 37 over this way. It starts at Ironforge? Okay. Maybe, maybe that is what I want to do. Maybe that is what I want to do. Buffalo Bill, Monica, good morning to you guys. Thank you for stopping by the stream. We, we have a little, I have a little bit of indecision about what I want to do. I, I think I will head to Ironforge. We'll look for that quest and then I, I think either way heading into Badlands is probably a good idea. With, with the level of the questing there, it, it seems like a decent place to go. I know there's that rock elemental quest that's like a huge grind because the drop rate's really low. That could be good for us. Miles, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. I appreciate you stopping by.
Zephyr, you're level 27 warrior. Just just died. Oh, you can't try to catch up to me, my man. Oh, the worst thing you could do is rush yourself in hardcore. I'm sorry to hear about that. Rip. And F. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about that. Never, never rush yourself to try to keep up. It, it's possible that I have more hours a day to play than you do. That's not exactly a fair playing field, you know? Ashley, thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to fly to Stormwind. I'm going to jump on the tram. We'll take that to Ironforge. Alex, we'll look for the start of that quest, and then we will head to the Badlands and see what we can do over that way. There's a few quests that are, that are level 35 through 38. Here they are. Watch, get her back. One day we might be at a point where, you know, we start the stream and we have a bunch of quests to do. <laughs> but that might that might be a little while. Alex, is it the uh, is it Iron Band wants you? Is that what I'm looking for here? Level 37. Speak with Prospector Iron Band at Iron Band's excavation in Lock Madan. Okay, I know where that is. I, I'm surprised to see that's a level 37 quest that takes us to Lock Madan, but I'm I'm assuming it doesn't keep us in Lock Madan. Alexander, hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. I think there there was an Uldaman quest, but I thought it was given directly as such. Let's see. The Lost Dwarves, that's a that's an Uldaman quest. And then I think also Mythology of the Titans, that's uh Scarlet Library? Scarlet Monastery? Retrieve the Mythology of the Titans from the Monastery. William, good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by the stream. For everyone joining us after the conversation, we're, we're heading over to the Badlands. Inevitably, we're going to the Badlands, but... We're going to make a stop by Ironforge first, and we're going to pick up a quest chain. Uh, to which the reward may be a good two-handed mace. And yeah, at this point I would take anything, just like with a little bit more DPS than what we're currently putting out. It's getting a little bit dated. Alright, incoming Stormwind music. See how loud it gets today.
anything we need to do while we're in town. I don't think so. Nero Knight, welcome to the stream. You like the uh, the banners? Yeah, we got the uh, Alliance and Horde banners back there, making the making the background a little bit more classy than just a concrete wall. Patrick, welcome. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate you being here. Canon G, hello. Nothing much is up. We're heading over to the Badlands. I appreciate you stopping by. Yep, we're going to do some stuff in the Badlands today, a, a change of scenery and an opportunity to take on some level 35 to level 37 quest. And look at that, we caught the tram. How lucky are we? Shadow Star, good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you being here. Somebody laid a camping fire on the tram. I didn't know you could do that. Mr. Eonix, I appreciate you being here. I do try to keep it chill. You must have missed like all of the rested XP rants and a couple of other rants that I typically launch into if I get prompted too hard. But yeah, usually it's it's a pretty chill environment. Edric, how tall am I? I I'm 6'4". I look jacked. Oh, 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 okay. I, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's laundry day today, so I just I have to wear what I have. And this is what I had today. Yeah. It's not professional attire. But you know, I'm six foot four, which has nothing to do with how jacked I am. I, I used to be six foot four and 150 pounds when I was like 20. Now, now I'm six foot four and two hundred pounds, which is a more reasonable weight to be for someone when you're six foot four. Good morning, Whitney. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you stopping by this afternoon.
Oh, these are the festival guys. Wildfires in the Eastern Kingdoms. Oh, this is worth, like, experience points. Visit the fire festival camps located in Blasted Lands, Eastern Plague Lands, Hinterlands, and Searing Gorge. Yeah, we're not we're not going to be able to do any of those Watch zones. But we're not going to be able to do those zones. Uh, what about you? Oh, these are low level. Low level. Okay. Touch the bonfires within Stormwind Iron Forge. Do we have to do all of these? And it's only worth 600 experience points. I don't really know if it's worth it. All right, so we're grabbing Iron Band wants you. No. I received reports from Prospector Iron Band at his excavation site in Loch Modan. He needs some legwork done concerning another of our excavations. I don't have more details than that, but if you uh, want to stretch your legs, then go speak with Iron Band. Alright, we will do that. Don't mind me as I just dribble all over myself like a like a slovenly heathen. It's gonna be one of those mornings. Confo, welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for stopping by. You came just in time to watch me just pour water all the way down my face. Because I can't find my mouth hole. I actually I blame the water bottle. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I have it sealed properly. So I'll, I'll just blame the water bottle. There we go. That's better. I want to get some like long twisty straws so that I can like access my coffee and my water without having to pick up either container. I can just kind of like have them on a swivel. Just a, just a long ass twisty straw. A, a unique pattern for each of them. That's, that's kind of the dream. And then I, I want one of those machines, like if anybody watched the Andor show, the, the, the part where they were in the prison and they had like the tube that the, the nutrient paste came out of every day. I want like a nutrient paste tube so that I don't necessarily have to stop and eat stuff, but I can keep streaming. That would be ideal. Yeah, I, I want the twisty straws and uh, I want a tube from which nutrient paste comes forth at my leisure. That's it. That's it. The Plastic Nerd, good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by. Johnny Hoover, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate you. Oh, Lael, man, I'm at a point where, like, I don't even care what it tastes like. It has to have a neutral taste. <laughs> if it's just nutrient paste... What would I want? What would I want that to taste like? Maybe like oatmeal. Yeah, if it could just taste like plain oatmeal, like oatmeal that has boiled and kind of like sat for a while, that would be okay. If it had the consistency and taste of oatmeal, but like contained all my daily nutrients, and I can just like slurp it down out of like a tube, 
That that would be good. I would be cool with that. And then like if you wanted like flavored oatmeal, I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could, would have options. You know, I I just want the plain stuff. Johnny, did my did my night elf priest get the blue robe? Um, we had a robe with plus one spirit on it, and I liked our uh, our tunic and trousers that we were rocking. So I I've left her in that. I kind of like the. Uh, the tunic and trousers over the robes sometimes. I'm on a kick of buying like the vendor sets when I can find like a new vendor set and just buying the vendor set and equipping it for like just, you know, d a different look basically than you would ever see otherwise. Operation High Jump. It's going good. Yeah. I hope you're doing well. We are taking a chain here that's going to lead us into the Badlands. Yeah. Maybe even to get a good two-handed mace reward at the end of it all. <laughs> Can we get some commentary on the missing sub full of millionaires that went to see the Titanic? Uh, I hope that they're found. I don't really... I, I don't have a lot of commentary on it. It's hard, it's hard to find stuff in the ocean, it turns out. Because, yeah, much like space, it's just hard to, to find stuff. And I wish it were easier for them to find 21 foot subs. My slash played, that's a WoW related question. My slash played is four days, eight hours, 52 minutes, and someone else will have to do the math if you want that converted into straight up hours, because I can't do that math in my head. You got my attention. I am a stupid person. Stormplank sent you, did he? Good. I have a big task for you. Find Agmond. Prospector Agmon was in charge of our excavation site in the Badlands to the southwest. I say was because, well, I haven't heard from him for weeks. I need you to find Agmon so I can get his report. Last I heard, Agmon was at the southernmost dig site in the Badlands, a tiny operation past the Anger Fortress. I'd start your search for him there. Okay, okay. Off with you. Oh, Johnny, I haven't checked my mail, man. No, if you sent me mail on that character, because like what happens is when you play hardcore, you just kind of forget. And I noticed today that I had mail, but I haven't checked it yet. Yeah. If, if it's something decent, like three spirits sounds better than one spirit. So like that would probably be something that I'd wear. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I played this morning and I tried to take on the Barrow Den and the Barrow Den is, the Barrow Den's hard. Uh, alright, so we're going to the Badlands. Um, we are going just directly to the south. Okay. Awesome. You can't use mail in Hardcore. No, we're talking about an immersive playthrough that I have going on the Night Elf. A Night Elf Priest immersive run over on the Mancrick server. Yeah, there, I don't know if you're allowed to open mail in Hardcore. I, I, haven't, I haven't touched the mailbox because I don't want to end up in a failed status. And then so what happens is like when I play non-hardcore, I kind of forget about mail. In, in the same way that you kind of forget about the auction house, in the same way that you kind of forget about five-man dungeons. You kind of have to like remind yourself that these things exist in the game. Yeah, don't worry, no one is sending me bags in hardcore. <laughs> we, we have the same crappy bags we've had for a while. As much as I hate a full inventory. Yeah, what, what I would advise for like the restrictions in hardcore, you know, it says no trading, no auction house. Don't click on those things. <laughs> don't click on the auctioneers. Don't click on the mailbox. You know, if there's a trigger that's going to get triggered, it's going to happen when you click. So I, what I do is I just don't interact with any of those things. I have almost run up to the auctioneers thinking that they were the bank. So I, I kind of hope that like if you just click an auctioneer that doesn't like make you a failed status. I, w I would hope you'd have to do more. Because yeah, I've almost accidentally ran up to an auctioneer and clicked them thinking that I was at the Iron Forge bank. So you can't click on the mailbox at all. Yeah. Yeah, I was never, I never wanted to find out. <laughs>
All right, what do we got over here? Oh shit, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, these guys are elite in Classic Era. They are not just like lowly little guys outside the entrance. They are actually elites. Perfect. We are gonna grab whatever quest we can along the way, except this one. Yeah, Johnny, it's easy to forget. I, I, I checked the auction house on the priest once to see if, like, herbs would sell. So I, I made myself check it. Spoiler alert, uh, nothing sells for much, not the low-level materials. So I'm still at a point where, like, I'm not really going to be using the auction house on that character. Which is funny. Operation, you can't imagine getting to a small sub and going two miles under the ocean. Yeah, I, I don't I wouldn't want to do that either But I'm the same person that I don't want to fly over an ocean any more than I want to be underneath it. I, I Just I don't you know, especially if it's like like I talked about before with the with the airplane Like I need to have like a way that I can convince myself that I can live And so I'd probably I'd probably take a boat I'd probably be okay with a boat that took me across the ocean Like so I can have the illusion that if anything happens to the boat I might still somehow live like on a raft or you know like anything like that but if you're deep, deep under the water, like, you're you're just screwed if anything happens. The same thing if, if you're in the air and anything happens, like, there's really nothing you can do at that point. You're, you're just kind of at the mercy of RNG, and that's not really a great place to be. Alex, it is going. We grabbed the Iron Band quest, we got it turned in in Loch Madan, we've picked the follow-up, and we are... We are trying to find Agman, which I'm assuming is the... Part of the quest chain we were talking about. Uh, we're gonna try to come down here and grab a sign of hope. Um, I'm thinking this is all enemies right here, so maybe I, I ought to not just wander in. Let's check this guy. Oh shit! Okay, he doesn't have wings. He doesn't have wings. Ra, you flew to Hawaii back, and it wasn't bad at all. I'm not worried about the flight being bad. I'm worried about the plane just not making it. That's all. Because <laughs> I can't control that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure when it's all fine, it's all fine. Like, I don't care about turbulence or anything like that. I've taken lots of, uh, like, domestic flights for work. I used to travel around quite a bit in the States, so... I've been on lots of planes. I'm not, I'm not afraid to fly. I just don't want to have to go over the ocean. Because it seems like when you hear about passenger planes that do have a problem, they have that problem when they're when it's an international flight over an ocean. So I just, I just, you know, I'm not in a position to travel internationally anyway. I, I don't exactly have the money to do that, even if I wanted to. So it kind of works out that I, I just absolutely don't want to. Uh, I have no clue where this guy is unless he's in the outhouse. I'm just, uh, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. You know what I mean? I'm not seeing it, and I don't know a world in which we fight our way back there anyway. <laughs> Rob, that pilot lied to your face, man. <laughs> oh yeah, Viper, the, something going wrong with the plane is definitely RNG. You know, like, usually the plane's gonna run fine. One weird thing happens with a bolt or a nut inside the engine and suddenly the engine's on fire. It's like, no one did it, you know what I mean? No one did it. No one was like, I'm gonna make sure this shit burns down. But stuff like that happens anyway. And it's like, you know, there's only so much probability before you get a plane that's gonna have a problem. That's just how probability works. Like, eventually some shit goes wrong. And I just, I don't want to put myself in the position where that, that's, that happens to me. It's, it's an easy choice. There's an item to click on the ground. Yeah, I'm worried about if we can get close enough to it with all those dudes around. We can go back and check it out. But there seemed to be like at least a three pull there and I don't really want to deal with a three pull. How are you? A dwarf and his tools. Hey Rambles, be careful around here. There be there be dark iron dwarves all around. Looked like the Shadowforge clan. They just attacked the excavation site I was working at. Killed nearly everybody there, including my boss Hammertoe. I barely escaped with my life. The site's to the north of here. This is... 
What is this? This is this sounds like Uldaman. Watch your back. It's not Uldaman. Uh huh. Okay, it is marking some of the elites though. It doesn't see it doesn't indicate that it wants me to fight elites. What can I do for you? Mirages. In our hurry to leave the Oldamont excavation site, we were forced to abandon many wagons and crates of supplies along the way. The local ogres from Camp Kosh have been on our abandoned equipment like vultures on a rotting corpse. Don't smell much better either. Oh, he, he, he went through a lot of effort to set that one up. Yeah, the corpses I meant. Yeah, we got what you meant. Retrieve the supply crate for Sigrun. Off with you. Yeah, find Agman. A <laughs> battered dwarven skeleton. Spoiler alert, Agman didn't make it. Agman didn't. I like how they just they spoil it in in the item description. It's hilarious. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back up here and look at this again, and we'll uh, we'll try to make an evaluation of whether or not we can do it. Oh good, the first thing we do is we pull two guys. I didn't see the Huntress at all. It blended right in with every other piece of red thing in the area. Maybe these guys will help me out, I highly doubt it. But we can see, maybe we end up, I hope that we kite the uh, Huntress until she resets. Yeah, there we go, okay. We're gonna be fine, it turns out. William, are you talking about the quest text, buddy? Uh, the quest text is the immersion add-on. Like, what changes the quest text? Like, I don't really want to be fighting a level 39. <laughs> But I, I, I get, I'm starting to get the idea that if I want to be in this zone, I'm, I'm apparently going to have to fight level 39s. And uh, that just might be what our life is like now. Getting level 38 would make me feel a lot better. Like, a lot, a lot better. Let's get some buff food going. We don't have any scrolls. We don't need this guy. We do have a couple of big potions, so... And, well, I, by big, they can heal up to 500, so... It's decent. It's a decent-sized potion. Yeah, I mean, the only way I do this is to fight my way directly in there, and I, I don't know if the pulls are going to allow for us to do that. We'll, we'll check it out, but there's no guarantee that I'm able to fight back here safely. Matthias, you do not get anything even nearly as cool as Crusader Strike ever in vanilla. We, the coolest stuff we have is stuff we're using right now. It doesn't really get any cooler than this. It doesn't get any cooler. Well, we get at the end of Retribution, you get Repentance. Which we're not going to be taking. <laughs> But yeah, as for the abilities you're going to cast and use regularly as a ret pally, you're looking at it. I don't really think we're getting anything else. And the green bar was a reputation I was tracking with the Gelkis clan. I can actually turn that off now. It's so small that I barely notice it. But we did some rep grinding over in Desolus. So we can get rid of that. Yeah, we're gonna have to make our way just right down the ramp, which, which feels bad. Um, that that's probably gonna necessitate clearing these guys, which doesn't seem like it's gonna be possible. We have a dark weaver here; they're gonna be firing shadow magic at us. Uh yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not. Mhm. Mm yep, yep, yep. Now we can maybe get the uh, the pick though. Any of these guys can drop the pick, so if we want to fight the ones that are kind of by themselves, we can try to get that to drop. That would be okay. Uh, we might even... Well, this guy's a caster. Otherwise, I'd say we might even be able to pull him. 
Yeah, this little area sucks. Um, if I pull this guy, do you think he'd run up the wall, or do you think he's gonna run all the way around and pull everybody? My bet is that he runs all the way around and pulls everybody. But yeah, this this little area is uh, is just awful. There's not a way that we're gonna be able to clear it on our own, so it would it would require that another player came by and just started playing here. Uh, and there are no other players here because we're just we're in that level range now. So yeah. Let's fight a few of these guys, see if they drop the pick, and then we will just have to move on. We got the caster back there. Uh, we, we can see if maybe we can leash the caster. That would be nice. Then we can come back and we can get him later. But if we, if we take too many Shadow Bolt hits at range, then it's going to be a problem. So we, we do... Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so great. Mm-hmm. They're in stealth. Yeah, there's dudes in stealth. Absolutely awesome. I need, I need, yes, I need something to fucking drop off of me right now. I can't fucking believe that this caster is still on us. I can't, I can't believe it. What, how do I get rid of this guy? What in the actual fuck is going on with this guy? Hmm, hmm, <laughs> this is not going to be what kills us. No fucking way. That was unbelievable. <laughs> I've never been chased so long and so hard by an enemy that I had not hit. It was strange, yeah. I've never seen some shit like that. Let me point out that we aggroed the cat much, much later. Okay? The cat got more hits in on us. The cat was closer to us. The cat aggroed us much later. But the cat leashed. The caster, who we had not hit who had only hit us twice, who we pulled with the original guy way back at the camp, he didn't fucking leash. And that's the kind of shit that will get you killed. Because obviously I thought he was going to leash like a normal mob might do. But clearly some weird interaction happened and he was able to reset his leash again and again and again. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, the cat aggro, le he left sooner. Right, the cat left sooner. The cat was able to hit the shit out of us too. So the cat should have been able to like be resetting his leash by hitting us. But he still leashed. Like at his, fi at his finite leash point, he still leashed sooner than the caster did. That caster felt like he was going to follow us all around the zone. It was getting nuts. Very, very, very uncomfortable. This, all this shit that was here is about to respawn, but maybe I can get in here and grab the crate. <laughs> would Consecration help me out a bit in this run? I don't think so. I don't think Consecration would help, because I, I don't want to be fighting multiple enemies, period, at the same time. And Consecration is about, is about dealing damage to multiple enemies at the same time. And if we're not tanking and we're not we're not like AOE mob grinding, then consecration is not going to help. 
If, if we were doing like a tank build and I was going to purposely fight two or three enemies at a time, then I would definitely grab Consecrate. It's a cool ability. It's just kind of a waste of a talent point for how we're playing. That guy, that guy straight out vanished. He straight out vanished and he, he was a warrior. I don't know where he went. I kind of expected him to come over here, but I, I don't think that he did that. I think that he must have went in the complete opposite direction. Otherwise, yeah, it would have been great to have somebody to take this on with, but uh, it doesn't look like he was interested in that. I gave him might to kind of like, you know, indicate my potential cooperation in his endeavors. So he must not need that one. I don't like how much damage they can do to us. That, that's scary. It's just scary. This place is scary. Yeah. We really can't walk around very much without mana, because if we, if we walk around without mana, we're even if we're at full health, we're going to get jumped by one of those stealth cats. That's how we have to think about it. Yeah, I'm hoping the level makes me feel just a little bit safer here. I, I don't know if this is going to get it for us or not. You got my attention? Thanks so much, Rambles. While you were gone, I uh, swallowed a mouthful of sand. Oh, oh you, you might need to get your stomach pumped, buddy. Ah, uh, that did not do it. Scrounging. It's going to be tough going here if I can't manage to scrounge up some material to construct some defenses and other necessities. I've noticed that the ogres in the area seem to be well equipped with scrap metal. Maybe the stories of siege engines in the Badlands weren't so far off after all. Anyway, uh, the prospector's been getting worried about the state of our little camp, so I'd like to get working soon. Safe travel. Is that the ogres that were all dead back this way? Uh, yeah. Those guys were like level 36, 37. Um... I feel like that would be okay to do. However, uh, maybe we come down here and we find Agmond and we see how he's doing. We'll try to fight a few things on the way that seem a little bit safe. Maybe we will level up with kill experience. Is there a flight point for the crypt that is up the hill? Uh, Jason, I'm not seeing any flight points on my map, and uh, I think Questy would show them to me. So yeah, unless unless anybody knows otherwise, I don't think I don't think we get a flight point here. I think the closest flight point is always going to be Thelsimar up in Loch Madon. Sometimes they do that with these with these mid and high level zones that they just don't give you a flight point. Sometimes they give one faction a flight point and not the other faction. Oh, is there a point? I read flight point. Is there a point for the crypt? Ah, uh, probably not. We could find out. I, I don't know. I don't know this area very well. Yeah. 
this is an area that I just don't know well, and that's kind of what's adding to my tension here, is uh, I'm just not familiar with it. Hey Tim, welcome to the stream. Good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for stopping by. We're in the Badlands. It's been... it's been bad. Yeah. That can sum it up. It's been bad here in the Badlands so far. Uh, I hate that these guys path so much. That's a good point, Ra. When you when you hear like horde music in a zone, you just kind of expect as alliance you're not gonna get a flight path. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I don't even know I don't even know if the horde have a flight point, do they? Do they have like a camp over here? There are so many animals here, like all over the place. You, the density of the wildlife here is kinda crazy. I think I did a little bit of farming here for my mount back on the day. I have memories of my original Tauran warrior here. Farming up the uh, the little pluffy tails that they drop. Do we have any? Yeah, these long soft tails. I remember them like once you get a stack, they sell for quite a bit. Soft bushy tails. That's probably the one. Yeah, I remember farming these on my warrior like way, way back. There's a play point at Cargath. Yeah, that's horde stuff, right? Red Robin, I hope it turns out to be a good choice. We're hoping to complete a specific quest chain here that could reward a, a good mace, a good two-handed mace. So far, it's been really sketch. We had a really sketchy mob that just wouldn't leash, and yeah, it was... It was not fun, and it probably would have killed, killed any other character class. Except maybe a mage if we'd been able to blink away and get more distance, but any, anybody without, a, without a, like a power word shield... Would have bit it. Would have bit it to that pull. So. Yep, we will. We will hit 38. Maybe a, uh, not the next kill, but maybe the kill after that. That's if we don't get killed, because th there's so much wildlife and it, it paths around quite a bit. So. I got, I got some uh, cold pizza for me ready to eat here, so I, I might go camera dark when we're safe in a little bit and uh, munch on some food. Uh, yes, I said cold pizza. Let's just get over it, okay? I, I like Jet's pizza the next day. I like it to be cold. Only the next day. Don't eat cold pizza if it's been in your fridge for more than a couple days. But if it's, if it's the next day and it's been refrigerated, then it's, it's fine to eat. <laughs> JC, yeah, you missed a really, really scary pull, and th this whole area is is scary, and I'm I'm just not really, I'm not digging it. Let's say that we have eight spirit, eight stamina. We can go ten int, ten spirit. I don't really think I want to give up the the stamina. How much HP is that going to be if I switch us out? We got thirteen thirty two right now. That takes us down almost 100 HP. I, I can't drop 100 HP right now. That is not gonna happen right now. Yep, we can't do it. Oh, you're level 39. Perfect. Perfect. I love fighting level 39s. JC, you like cold pizza too? Yeah, I like it. I like it the next day. I like cold pizza more than I like microwaving my, my leftovers. So, but I, I might... I might eat that soon. I haven't had a huge appetite today, but I should probably eat something. We're, we're gonna figure out this quest first and get somewhere safe before I even contemplate that. Because we are, we are not safe right now. Oh boy, we are not safe. Hey, there's the ding though, so that's good. Yay, level 38. I'm still feeling super stressed, but it's probably fine.
Alright, I see the body. Thanks, guys. We should spend the talent point, also. Uh, and speaking of the talent points, like, I really... Oh, we were putting it here. Yes, yes. Reduce the mana cost of judgment and seal spells. Let, let's just keep going into that for now. If it makes us a little bit more mana efficient, then it, it's probably worth it. We are, we are sealing and judging quite often. It's kind of the thing that we do. So... Mount in a couple days. Yeah. I think, like, the, we'll get the mount probably this weekend. If I, if I had to guess. If today's Thursday, I, I think today's Thursday, <laughs> I could I could be totally wrong. We're on summer break now, so... I, I don't know. I know it's a weekday. And I'm pretty sure it's not Friday. So yeah, this weekend, this weekend we should get them out. If we, if we live that long, you know. We could hurt out train and come back. Yeah, that, that might be valid. I don't know what we get at level 38. Sometimes we have levels where it's like, it's not worth the training. I'd really like to get something that like gives us some more power, but I don't think that's going to happen. Oh gosh, come on, open faster, open faster. You can open faster than that. We'll have to take a look at the quest here in a second. We got a smoothbore gun that we can't use, perfect. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, Th this is a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit uh, out of our range. 12 bone snappers and then the named guy, all right. Where would these guys be? These guys are going to be literally like right here. Okay. Let's head over this way to the little camp. And then, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It might be, it might be time to train. It depends on what we get. Maybe I'll have a look and see. Still been thinking about doing a uh, Scarlet Monastery Armory just to see if we can get anything to drop. 3080 Seal of Wisdom and Holy Light. Yeah, thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. That that tells me it's not worth it to hearth out of here right now. Eventually having the bigger heal will be helpful, but I, I don't need it right now. Seal of Wisdom I'm not going to use right now. <laughs> I'm not going to use it, and uh, having a bigger heal will help eventually, but I, I don't think I have to pop out right now to, to do that. There's an add-on called What's Training. That might be okay to have. Yeah, I often just want to look it up anyway. So that, that might be an okay add-on for me to have. Red Robin, the Alliance poster. It's a it's a cloth banner, actually. I just got them on Amazon. The Horde one is back there, too, but my head's in the way. So, yeah, I, I just found those on Amazon. My wife actually got them for me for, uh, for Father's Day. But I, I had taken a look at them, and she had seen them, like, in the history and stuff. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, we, we got it from just uh, killing a couple of random beasts. Alright, what do these guys got? Only one that we could do at level 40. I got what you need. 
barbecued buzzard wings. Keep it real. All right. Speak, friend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when we do our, our horde character. We'll move the horde one to the front. We'll kind of shift them. I have them on these little clippy things that are like command hook clippies. Although I'm kind of waiting for them just to like pop off the wall. It's, it's like a concrete wall, so it's kind of porous, and I, I don't really know how well the command hooks are going to stick to like a porous surface. Fizzle sent you? Well, that changes things. Of course I'll help you. Fizzle and his brother are two of the few people who don't want me dead. Fair enough. So Fizzle wants to make pistons, huh? Pistons strong enough to take whatever stresses he has planned, and if I know Fizzle, then this new car of his is a volcano on wheels. Ten Endurium Flakes. For the whole. Okay. Yeah, my wife is the best. That's that's <laughs> the fact that I'm able to do what I do every day and have the life that I have <laughs> is is pretty much right now exclusively thanks to her. So, yeah. I am grateful every day. We could head over here and grab this stuff. Do you guys think I want to tackle these guys right now? Level 42 quest. I really just I want to get the mace, you know. Is, is it a trap? Damn, look at that top end damage. Oh my god. <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's let's check it out. Let's let's just see. We'll we'll approach from this way. And we'll just have a look. The only way that we'll do it is if I can get the name guy by himself, okay? If, if I can't figure out a way to get the name guy by himself, I don't think we're gonna be able to take on two of them at the same time. With the, with the, with the Magrum Centaur leader, I was able to kite them both until the second one dropped off. But after I saw what that caster did here earlier today, uh, I, I'm, I'm less inclined to try that technique on guys that are higher level. The cool thing about the Centaur was that they weren't like super high level. So I could have them hitting me for a minute, both of them, and it wasn't really a big deal. Whereas if these guys are level 39 to 41 and they're hit, they're both hitting me for a minute, it's going to be a big effing deal right away. <laughs> JC, we're not there yet. You can look right now. It's okay. <laughs> we're not in that much danger yet. But look, even this guy is beating my ass. And he's a level 38 cat, so... We're going to have a peek. We, we need to go see... We need to go find out if we can do this right now. Because there's there's other stuff that we could do here, you know, to maybe even get us to level 39 eventually with enough grinding we could get 39 here with some of the other quests that we have. And that would be awesome. I do have a good sense for when it's time to completely give up and run away. Now what has screwed me before is like not planning out my escape route and not knowing exactly which way I'm going to run. That has almost gotten us killed, so I'll have to kind of plan it. Like if I look around here, God, I don't want to have to run because we're going to run into stuff. And even if we clear a bunch of stuff out, it, it might not be enough to make the way completely safe because look how much they can move around. That guy, I thought that guy was coming all the way for us. Escape routes are a myth. When you have, like, respawn rates that are unpredictable, and in classic era, they are definitely unpredictable. Yeah, respawn, re like, respawn. Escape routes are, are kind of a myth. Respawn routes are kind of a myth, too, because it, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, it, it can be a myth when you have to deal with things just popping back up. Like, I'm kind of clearing my way in. More so just to kind of think about things before we're, like, too deep in it. Like, this guy is level 40. <laughs> now, when we were level 37 just 10 seconds ago, he would have been orange. And I would have been like, nah. Not him. Look at this. We, we have to clear more of these cats out. If we, if we want, like, an actual staging area, this is not it. 
This is not it. Let's pull one of them and let's see what it, what happens. I'm kind of hoping they don't run. I'll pull him back a little bit. But yeah, the, the hope is here that he, he resisted the stun. How badass is that? Yeah, we just... We just... <laughs> we don't have the attack power to, to, to hurt these guys. It's gonna be just a slugfest all the way down. Shit. Oh. Oh shit. Okay. Can you die please? Thank you. <laughs> ah shit. How did I get stunned? I'm running sideways. How did I get stunned? I son of a bitch. I swear to god. I don't want to pop this cooldown. We, we got another player here, a level 40 person who's, who's probably more prepared for what's going on. Unfortunately, that's going to guarantee that we're not going to get the name guy when he pops. Oh wait, oh shit, he already killed the name guy. Hey, what's done is done. This person didn't help us at all, and they killed the name guy. So, they have a, a, a head crack that stuns no matter what. Okay, was that what he was doing to me? I believe it. I'm going to run in here and grab this chest. If there's a blue weapon in it, we just leave. I don't have any inventory space. There's nothing in it, obviously, because that dude probably already looted it. Um, okay. Cool, cool, cool. We have no, no, no items. We've killed one bone snapper. Yeah. Hmm. This guy's level 39. That seems a little bit more doable. probably do this if we do it really slowly it should be okay I think we just go slowly we go slowly today I want to eat some of this pizza though so I'm gonna go really slowly for a minute I'm gonna throw myself on mute and turn the camera off and I have to eat a couple bites of this cold Jets pizza to uh, to keep me going here
Yeah, I, I think we can agree that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the bag upgrade. <laughs> the bag upgrade alone was worth sticking it out here, so that's pretty awesome. Eight slot and eight slot. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's great. What is that, like a five gold value? We're talking about 12 slot bags. Can you even buy 12 slots? Are they, are they five gold or 10 gold? Uh, level 41 Shaman. This is the boss fight right here. <laughs> this is basically the boss fight. And so we, we can't let this guy heal. That's gonna make the fight like way too long. Oh good, he has healing ward. Oh, I love when they just have healing ward. That's awesome. I hope that means he doesn't have like a full-fledged heal, but we're gonna save the interrupt in case he does. It's a 10 gold value, Alex. Yeah, that's huge. Sorry, Morlu, you asked, will I be playing in the official hardcore servers? Yes, when, whenever those open up later this summer, we will definitely be there for it. Mm -hmm. There we go, pizza is basically decimated. Jess, good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by the stream. 
what's harder to play, Shaman or Paladin? I mean, the Paladin has a lot more survivability. Difficulty to play is going to come down to, like, individual play style and stuff like that. But as far as, like, surviving, I, I do feel like the Paladin probably has an easier time surviving. The Shaman's got some tricks, you know, you got Stoneclaw Totem to aggro an enemy. Sometimes one of your Fire Totems can aggro an enemy for you, too. Especially, like, the AoE one. If you get a bunch of guys chasing you, just, like, burst the AoE. Uh, but yeah, you don't have any bubbles, so you don't have anything on a Shaman that says, I stop taking all damage for 10 seconds. <laughs> And that's what saved us on the Paladin, is just like the ability to completely stop taking damage for periods of time. Without that ability, we would have gotten killed several times over. Uh, for professions, I, I'm not doing any professions on this character right now. We are doing mining and that's it. And all we're doing with mining is we're selling it. We had blacksmithing, but it takes too many resources to keep blacksmithing going. And I didn't want to spend, like, additional hours specifically farming copper. In the future, we're going to make all of our hardcore characters herbalism and alchemy, because everybody could use potions. Potions are good for everybody. Mana potions, health potions, elixirs to buff us. So in the future, we'll probably always do herbalism alchemy. But here, we're just we're running mining and we're just selling the ore. I see that he's uh, he's up, and we, we could probably pull him without pulling anybody else, uh, and I, if I'm going to do that, I probably have to pull him next. And I will get a food buff, yeah, somebody reminded me about the food buffs, I will, uh, I will get a food buff going here. Alright, let's get all of our mana back, let's heal up, and... Ooh, wait, is he gone? Hmm, maybe he's hiding behind the tent. Yeah, I, I seem to have lost him. I had eyes on him for a second. Um... Well, shit. Was I, was I imagining things? Did I not see the name guy here a second ago? Huh. Okay, maybe I, I just... Maybe I'm just losing my mind. Uh, cause he's not here. Let, let's pull this guy. Oh shit! <laughs> he's hiding back there! Of course he's hiding back there! That's lovely! <laughs> he's got a shami with him. Oh god, that's awesome. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh shit. Should have marked him with a skull. Absolutely we should have marked him with a skull. Yep. The buzzard's an elite? Like, we don't have enough problems already? <laughs> Why is there an elite buzzard right here? Yeah, we, we don't need that kind of problem. We, we've got our own problems. Where, where is this buzzard at? Because I, I don't see it anymore. Oh, gosh. Oh, this guy's running. Of course he's running. He's going to run right to the elite buzzard. We need to crit. We need to hit, Jason. Yeah, we just we needed to have more hits. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. So ah, my hands are a little shaky. Yeah. Well, thankfully we did manage to leash those dudes for sure. I I'm really happy with how that turned out. This will be. This will probably be the toughest thing that we do today. I, I just I want the weapon from this quest and I need to have it now. So yeah. Whew. Yeah, and the leash was the only way we were ever going to do that. So I, I'm glad that we just had to reactionarily do it. Because if I had tried to plan it out, I probably would have fat fingered it somehow. So like having it as like an adrenaline reaction, what we had to do for me, for me that was better. Because if I knew that I had to somehow plan that pull, I would have fucked it up.
Yeah, if I if I knew I had to do what we just did in, in advance, I wouldn't have been able to do it the same way. I would have been too nervous about it. I, I'm just super happy that like it just happened that way. I it happened that way because I made a huge mistake. I literally didn't realize that there was a crevasse that they could crawl into back there and hide. I, I didn't realize that at all. And that's the kind of stuff that can happen to you when you're not familiar with the quests. Yep. <laughs> it was a that would probably make a pretty decent clip. Yeah. That that was a fun one. These guys don't look like too safe to pull. And we we need like three more, three more bone snappers, right? And so maybe I kind of maybe I hug the outskirts a little bit. We look for bone snappers like out a ways. I never saw the elite uh buzzard thankfully. Which must mean I didn't get too close to it, you know? Uh, if we take this guy, we pull him back into this dead zone back here, that could be okay. Oh, the dead zone's not a dead zone, there's just shitty draw distance in the game, so I didn't see the wolf back here. Definitely just not a dead zone at all. Yeah, Jason, the exploration ding, that encounter I, I have as a as a video up on the channel. Yeah, it's I forget what I titled it, but yeah, it's up on the channel. It's not a short or anything, it's like a minute and a half clip that I had to manually edit. Even inevitably, I just couldn't even really clip it with YouTube. So I just like recorded that part of the recording and then republished it as a one and a half minute video. What, what you don't see is right before that clip, I actually put myself in danger by not having enough mana because we had been being chased by something. And I was t I was talking about like, why wouldn't it leash, why wouldn't it leash? And somebody was telling me that we, we had been hitting it. That we had been hitting it while we were running away and that that was why it wasn't leashing. And so I, I, I was kind of angsty and I, I went to demonstrate that you can't face away from an enemy and auto attack it. So I turned my back on a tiger and let him hit me in the back a couple times to demonstrate that when you have your back to an enemy, your auto attack does stop. <laughs> and so then I had to heal up and then we pulled a bunch of ads. So I already didn't have a lot of mana uh, and that was my own fault. Because uh, I was being kind of salty about something that somebody said to me. So... Oh, Johnny Hoover, you missed you missed something pretty epic, man. I, I might be able to clip it later and put it up on the channel like I did with the other one. But yeah, basically, we had to kill a named guy. I didn't know where he was. I accidentally aggroed him and his two buddies. And then we had to run away. We leashed the buddies. We killed the level 42 named guy. And I think that's like, is that quest complete? That's quest complete, right? Yeah. Where does this turn in?
Prospector Iron Band and Lock Madon. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I want to get this one turned in right away. I think I think I want to get this one turned in right away. And I feel like there are some things that we could do here, like lower level stuff that would be fine to do. Buzzard wings we could probably do. We have we have one buzzard wing as it is. The lucky pick, I, I'm not sure. You know, the lucky pick, we have to fight those guys until it drops. There aren't a lot of them to fight that are solo pulls. A lot of them are like group pulls, which we really can't do. So. <laughs> Jason, my blood pressure still feels like it's up as well. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still coming off the adrenaline from that one. That was really something. It couldn't have gone any better, because like I said, if I had tried to consciously plan what we did, it wouldn't have worked. It only worked because it was a reaction to survive. We're gonna make our way out of here and just head to the north, but if we come across any buzzards, I'll, I'll definitely sidestep to get any buzzards that we can for the, uh... Buzzard wings. Like, this guy right here is likely. Now the other issue is once we get this mace, we are gonna have a little bit of work to do. <laughs> we have to... We have to swing at things, and we're not really... This place is not going to be a good place to swing at things and level it up. Uh, right outside of uh, Karanos, or right outside of uh, in Lachmo down there, I think the enemies are too low of a level for us to get skill-ups off of them. At 104, they might be too low of a level. So we'll have to, we'll have to head somewhere. JC, thanks for being here. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Yeah, Jason, that's the mace upgrade. Yep, yep, we're gonna get, uh... This guy. Oh, I, c I can't compare from here. Oh, no, no sticky keys. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Uh, so we're looking at 139 top end damage, over 81 top end damage, and 31 DPS, over 21 DPS, and then 34 attack power. I think one strength is equal to two attack power, right? So technically we have 20 to 24 attack power on the current sword, and we're going to have 34 on the mace. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be good. It's going to be good. We just have to live long enough to actually equip it and use it, you know? Th this place is not exactly safe. It's going to be good for us. Now, like I said, the trouble is going to be leveling up mace skill to a point where we can use it. The buzzard is called Karakotl. Zeracotl. Luckily, he doesn't seem to be anywhere near us right now. He's a level 55 rare elite. Um, excuse me? Yeah, they like doing stuff like that. You know, you have to think about the fact that, like, are they trying to get us killed with stuff like that? Yeah, they're trying to get us killed, but the, the design intention of the game was never that we'd be playing a one-life character. So, you know, they absolutely put stuff in the game to get us killed. But obviously, it's always with the thought that we would spirit run back and keep playing the game, you know? That's why they put level 55 elites in places, literally to get you killed. But, <laughs> but, the, the, the part where we don't res, that's, that's on us. Home of random packs and mobs that will one-shot you. Yeah, it's the Badlands for a reason. And so with that knowledge in mind, you know, that, that limits maybe how much time I would like to spend here. <laughs> um, even though there are some quests that we could definitely do, we'll just have to be extra careful. What helps is when we can get eyes on it and I can mark it with a skull or with an X. That makes it easier to see so that it doesn't really like swoop down on us unexpectedly. Oh, these guys are green now. We, we, we can maybe come and swing on some of these guys. Uh, I like to like switch between the weapons, like start with the one we're skilling up and then switch over to the the experienced weapon for the kill. So we'll, we'll do that probably.
Oh, you know what? For the pick, we can come over here. For some reason, I thought this was Uldaman, and I thought these guys would be elites. But maybe they're not elites. Maybe we can come over here. Maybe they'd be more spread out than the dudes that are down in, in the little dig site. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Let's empty the bags while we're here too. Hi. Get a little repair in. And we'll sell a bunch of stuff. Uh, now wait a minute. <laughs> I, I don't want to sell the vulture buzzard wings. Okay, perfect. We haven't sold them yet. on your mind this guy has like really decent caster gear for like low levels hmm. interesting Watch your back all right let's collect our prize talk to me there we go be good and there she is. There is our new mace. Look at that. Gracie, good afternoon. Thank you for stopping by the stream. Yeah, I'll hit some things here. I just don't know how many skill ups that we're going to get. We're at 100, 100 out of 195. So what we'll do is we will pull this out here and we will pull this out. So if I, if I have to switch to finish an enemy off, we can do that. But yeah, this is awesome. Thank you, Alex. Alex was the one who told me where to begin this quest chain. So we owe this weapon to Alex. Marlena, thanks for being here. Enjoy the walk. That's awesome. We'll see you later.
Liam, good afternoon. Thank you for stopping by. A macro for the weapon switch? Yeah, I could. If I if I was a person that could write macros quickly, <laughs> I definitely could. Um, I'm hoping that we don't have to switch back and forth too much. That's kind of my like naive hope. I'm gonna step. Ooh, no, not not ooh. Ooh, a green. Okay, I'm gonna step into this area here and we'll we'll swing a little bit, and then we'll we'll heal and switch back. But if if I fight just some of the green guys that were. The wolves and maybe the vultures. I, I will get it skilled up pretty quick doing that. Even if I do have to switch out. Yeah, I'm kind of curious like how much more power it is comparatively. So if we look at our stats here, we got 110 and then we got 378 power. See, that's the part that I never understand. See how, like, melee attack goes down, but power goes up. It's always been weird to me. I never know quite how to fully interpret the stats here or to compare them meaningfully. This also begs the question, you know, with this slower weapon, would we be better off going back to a Sela command build? I, I would be willing to do that if, like, numerically it's going to be better. But if we do a Seal of Command build, I probably won't be casting Seal of the Crusader anymore. So that that's something to keep in mind also. Yeah, I'm going to swing on this guy for a bit. We're going to get to half health. I'm going to heal and then we'll switch weapons. I, I, I know I should. I should, but that would require that we that we go somewhere else for this expressed purpose. You know what I mean? Like it would probably it would probably be better, like ultimately it would be better. But then there's gonna be travel time involved for me to find like guys lower than thirty five, it's I'm gonna have to go somewhere else to find them. If I if I tough this out for a little bit, we'll just uh we'll just get through it, you know. Exactly, I'd have to travel and that's gonna take time and so switching back and forth is gonna take time. But I feel like the traveling bit of like finding somewhere that's like... I think the lock down guys, I'm only getting like one or two swings off on them. I'd like, to, I'd like to be able to swing for a little bit. It's one of those things, you know, I have a lot of those like little inefficiencies in the way that I play. Part of it, part of it is stubbornness. One twenty. One twenty is not bad. We'll get there. I, I like fighting these guys too because even though the fights are a little bit longer, at the end of it we get a chunk of kill XP. And if I if I was to fight stuff that was like too much lower, we wouldn't really be getting that much. Let me pop a food buff on as well, and we'll actually we'll go after this buzzard and see if we can get him to drop a wing. Powell, I'm glad you're liking the stream. Thank you for being here and hanging out with us. I appreciate that.
Uh, Jason, yeah, you thought I was missing that much? Yeah, I have the mace on, so... I I'm switching back and forth a little bit. Yeah, if we, if we were missing that much on the sword, that would be a, a terrible string of bad luck. Yeah, we, we probably won't start hitting consistently until we're like 135 weapon skill. And then we'll start to hit a little bit more. Sean, thank you, man. I appreciate you being here. I, I appreciate the lurk. Yeah, I, I I am a big supporter of lurking. Especially when you are at work or you have other things going on. I definitely understand and I appreciate you being here. There we go, we were able to kill that one without having to switch out. It was painful, and it took a long time, but it's getting better. 131. 131 out of 195. Yeah. Yeah, we let Maces slip by the wayside a little bit. That is absolutely true. We haven't we haven't really used a mace. It must it would have been before we got kill maim. The last time we used a mace would have been before we got the kill maim axe. Because then we went from the axe to the sword that we had. So, yeah. Uh, let's come up here. Would definitely love to find just some more wildlife to farm on here. I'm gonna avoid these guys. Level 36, yeah, let's have a peek over here. Here we go. It would be really cool to finish up this buzzard quest and be able to turn that one in. Uh, I see the cat there. I, I'm really surprised that he didn't he didn't see us. 
it was only because his back was turned that I, I got away with that little maneuver. Otherwise, we would definitely have two mobs on us right now. And the ogres back here, the ogres back here are going to drop the scrap metal that we need for the other quest. What level are these guys? Level 36, that's not bad. Dust Belcher Warrior. Okay, let, let's see what a warrior can do. This guy is just all out here by himself, which is perfect. I'm going to switch out on these guys about halfway through. I'm, I'm going to, just to be safe, I'm going to switch out on them about halfway through. I, I don't want to stress anybody out too unduly. Especially as we start working our way into this place, I'm going to have to pull back as well. I'm hoping that they're all warriors, that none of them are casters. Oh shit, mystics, mystics. Yeah, the mystics I don't really want to mess with. We'll probably just fight the warriors and then we'll leave and come back. Uh, here's a Mystic. Yeah, my problem with the Mystic is that like, he's gonna heal, isn't he? Let's take on the one just so we know what they're capable of. Okay, we can move them. They, they, they won't stand and cast indefinitely, but yeah, they, they are a fan of standing and casting. We can, we can move them a little bit. It did seem like he moved and got that cast off really quick, that last lightning bolt that he threw. It, it, it seemed like it was either like a one second cast or that something let him move while casting. Uh, it, it seemed that way to me too. Like they don't, it didn't seem like they were, he was always moving while casting, but that last one, that last one felt like he did. They don't run and that's a good thing, yeah. I'm still going to pull them out to my little kill spot here.
It would help if I wasn't on mute while explaining what we're trying to do. That's always a good start. Eventually here, the first dude is going to respawn, so I have to kind of keep an eye out for that. Eventually we are going to get a respawn back here. I don't quite remember where he was at, but he will be popping up back here somewhere. We're not doing bad on, on experience into level 38 either. It's It's been good to be here in the Badlands despite some of the, uh, some of the scares that we've had to go through. Corey, you're level 9, you want to know how long you're not competing for mobs? Uh, it gets better as you level up, you know. It, it also depends on, like, the time of day, but I, I would say, like, w once you're out of Elwyn Forest and, like, out of the starting areas, it gets a little bit better, but things are pretty busy all the way up until the level 20s. It, it was the level 30... The level 30 ding kind of let us get into areas that were much less populated. And so level 30 did seem to be like a pretty big threshold where there just aren't aren't percentage-wise nearly as many players as, as there are in the level 20s. So it'll be a while. Enjoy it while it lasts because like eventually eventually you will get to a, a spot where like there's nobody else on, you know. And it, it feels a little lonely, but it feels like you have earned the solitude to some extent. Because yeah, to your point, you often have to fight for, for spawns. Now, we haven't started a fresh hardcore character in a while. I know that before, when we were dying and restarting more often, like, every time I restarted, it was more populated, more busy. So... Be sad. Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I would say, like... I would say if you're, if you're jumping into WoW, don't jump into WoW Hardcore. <laughs> WoW Hardcore is kind of like, the way I think about it is, it's for people who either you really like that challenge, that's what appeals to you, or you've played a lot of World of Warcraft, and you kind of want something different out of your experience. But lots of people are playing on Classic Era servers right now that are not Hardcore, so if Classic Era interests you, I would say jump on any like medium or high pop Classic Era realm. Those realms are also busy, and unlike the hardcore realms, they probably they probably don't get less busy in the level 30s. They probably just get like more and more busy. So there should always be players around to play with. But yeah, definitely don't jump into hardcore challenge right away. Get get some experience under your belt just playing classic era. It's a good time to do so. The the community is very very active. And the way that they've clustered the servers together means that you're you're never gonna feel like you're playing alone which is really important in, in an MMORPG. Hey, we killed this guy with the mace. Well, I shouldn't say that. We haven't killed him yet. We, we do need to get a hit. And like, yeah, okay. Good, good, good. Perfect. Perfect. MJ, the DC in the water scared you? It gave me a little shock, too. Uh, I was warned about it, and uh, I kind of knew what to expect because every every time that I've ever run Black Fathom Deeps, I've gotten disconnected in the water in the same exact way. So I, I kind of knew what would happen, and luckily, you know, with a solid state hard drive and a, and a good internet connection, I knew I could get back in really quick if that happened. To, to be fair though, it was really risky, you know, fighting in the water, getting DC'd while, while in combat. It, it was not a great feeling to have. <laughs> the thing about that one though is like, the, and the reason I wasn't like super worried about it is if, if I die like that to an actual glitch in the game, I'm gonna put in a ticket and I'm gonna get the death protested. So like, never in my mind did I think like, if I die because of a disconnect here that we're gonna delete the character, no. We, we would have kept going and I would have put in a ticket. And then, you know, at least I can link them right to the to the VOD of, like, what happened. You know, if they need, like, proof of what happened, I have a VOD to show them. So I, I was pretty confident that it would be fine, even if we did, for some reason, die like that. I, I don't believe that, like, the game DCing us in that way should count towards, like, our death total. 
if that happened. Falling off the elevator is one thing, you know, we, I fell off an elevator and I deleted the character. But the game having a glitch in it that disconnects me in the water, that's not on me. <laughs> that one's not on me. That, that one's on Blizz. Vince, do I think official hardcore will have tickets for DC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those same those same exact bugs that cause that are going to exist. So yeah, they'll they'll have to have a way to to look at things. I think the things that you're able to put in tickets for will be different. But I I think getting DC'd by the game, not necessarily like DC'd by your internet dropping out because your internet dropping out, although you can't control that, that's something that happens on your end that Blizzard can't prove what happened. You know what I mean? You could yank your internet cord and say that your uh, your internet went out, but I, I think disconnects caused by bugs in the game would definitely be a, a forgivable death. Uh, I just don't know if they'd be able to look at when people claim that like their internet goes out and they die. I, I don't know how that would be handled or if it would be possible to account for that because there's not really a way to prove it. You know, they can see that you got disconnected, but they can't. You know, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have your ISP write them a letter? I don't know. So yeah, that kind of disconnect, I, I'm not sure, but definitely one caused by the game, especially one that is captured on recording, should uh, should definitely be able to be ticketed and forgiven. Miles, that's a fair point. Don't expect a prompt response. So what I worry about there, in that case, is like, on the official hardcore server, we are assuming that there are going to be baked in rules that don't that don't allow us to res. We're, we're going to be assuming that like it's the server's not going to let us res. So yeah, if you have to put in a ticket, your character's dead for a little bit anyway. You know what I mean? You're going to be hanging out as a ghost while they. Uh, um, unlike today, like today, if we were to die, we we can res. You can keep going. and We put in the ticket. Um, but yeah, on the official hardcore, if there is no res, like if that's just baked in how it is, then I'm not really sure you would be hanging out as a ghost while you waited for your ticket to be addressed, and that would probably suck. That would probably suck. Yeah, Monica, I'm assuming that when we're on the official hardcore servers, we're not going to be using the add-on anymore. Yeah, because the add-on is for, like, tracking and verification, and the server should handle all of that once we are actually on the hardcore server. It should handle all of that stuff. We should not need the add-on to be verified. We should not need the add-on to play. Like, we shouldn't have to follow the rules that are established in the add-on. Any rules that Blizzard wants us to follow will be baked into the server. So if there's stuff like you, if they don't want us using the auction house and they don't want us using the mailbox, the server will have to be set up that way. Nobody wants a situation where we're on an official Blizz hardcore server, but we're still having to play by rules that are made up. So that Because what happens when you play by made up rules is that some people follow the rules and other people don't. Other people get bags traded to them and gear traded to them and they just carry on with the challenge as if they're totally legit. So that's kind of the problem with uh, just relying on the add-on and uh, yeah, I'm assuming that they'll just have whatever rules they want will be hard-baked into the server. We won't have a way to use the auction house. We won't have a way to access the mailbox. We won't have a way to trade with our friends who want to give us bags. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what I'm assuming and what I'm also hoping for. All right, what are we up to here? 156 out of one, we're still like, we got a ways to go, but 
we, we've been able to kill these guys fairly consistently. It's been a little bit scary, I'm sure, for some of you. The cool thing is they don't run, they don't have a huge aggro radius, and they don't path around. So these guys are actually like pretty good grinding material in general. Vic V, you think that the only rule that matters should be one life? Uh, there are people that agree with you. There are people that realize, though, that if we're able to use the auction house and trade amongst ourselves, that yeah, that will give people the ability to get to a higher level and then to support their alts. And some people also believe that being able to deck your alt out in a bunch of like best in slot level one gear is not the spirit of hardcore. And I'm kind of in that group of people. I, I don't think that somebody decking out their level 1 character or helping their friend deck their character out by trading or by use of the auction house, I, I don't think that is the spirit of a hardcore run. What I do believe is that we should be able to group up in the open world to do elite villages, things like Pyrewood Village, the Ogres and Lachmadan. Uh, so I think that some of the restrictions should be removed, but I, uh, as far as the auction house goes and as far as mailing stuff goes, I don't see a way to allow us to do that without people being able to support their alts, and I really don't want to play on a hardcore server where I am surrounded by level 1 twinks. So, yeah. That's it! <laughs> that is it. That's how I feel about that one. The Plastic Nerd, I like that idea. Auction house at level 60 only for level 60s. Sure, absolutely. You just can't, you can't send any mail to someone who's not level 60. You can't use the auction house unless you're level 60. I think that that would be okay. But yeah, I, I don't want to be at a point where people are like, Oh, I got my character to level 35 and now I'm just going to support a low level alt because that's going to be an easier and more fruitful run. Or anything like that. Yeah, I mean... We are playing an MMO. We're playing an MMO with a self-imposed challenge. Yeah, we're getting rid of a lot of the social aspects of the game, but that's, that's what the challenge is for. And if you want that MMO experience in Classic Era, you have it. Y you go play on one of the Classic Era servers, you don't do the Hardcore Challenge. The, the, the community for Classic Era is thriving, so if you want to do a run where you get the auction house and you get the trade people and you can support low level alts there are there are places where you can play that way absolutely but hardcore hardcore for most people is the spirit of hardcore solo self found and yeah and i think that's what we're going to see on the hardcore servers and then when we're ready to do all the mmo stuff we're going to have a new season a classic wow sometime in the winter so we're going to get a, a new season of mastery and that'll be the place where we play. We can use the auction house and make tons of gold and buy our gear. We can do dungeons over and over again and group with our friends. So there's a place for that. It's just not, it's just not in hardcore. Everything in its place. This guy has an instant lightning shock of some kind and then a castable lightning bolt. That's what has to be going on with this guy. Sometimes he can instantly shock us with that lightning, other times he does have to stand and cast. Ooh, that was a nice crit. I, I appreciate that. I want to see more of that. I want to see more 380 crits. That would be ideal. Kevin, I feel like Joyous Journeys is good for Wrath of the Lich King, but keep in mind, a lot of people who play Classic Era, we, we play for the journey. We, we play because it's a long, long journey to get the level. And in the first season of Mastery, they gave us the 50% experience boost. Um, and yeah, me personally, I don't really want to see that again. If they're going to have year-long seasons, if a season of Classic WoW is going to be a calendar year, we don't, we don't need an experience boost. We need other cool things to be going on in the game, you know? They need to do other cool seasonal stuff. 
But if you're going to do a season of Classic WoW that lasts for 365 days, we don't we don't need an XP boost. It's a long ass time. <laughs> Even a casual player who plays like an hour a day, four or five hours a week, you know, even someone like that, if you give them 365 days, you're going to get your character to level. And for me and for a lot of people, there's not like an end game consideration of vanilla classic era. We're just, we're in it for the journey and like you can do some raids at end game if you really want to. But the end game is not as robust as other versions of World of Warcraft. So, like, if all you want to do is get to endgame quick and do endgame stuff... Classic Era is probably not your thing. Because although there, there is endgame stuff to do and it's challenging and rewarding, like, a lot of it is kind of crazy to organize. You're talking about, like, 40-man raids and stuff like that. And there's, just, and there's just not a ton of it. There's just not a ton of different content to do, you know? Yep, classic is all about the journey. Journey before destination. And the great thing is you have different flavors of WoW to play, so if literally all you care about is group stuff at endgame, you got retail. If you if you kinda like a balance of like the journey and having quite a bit to do at endgame, then you have Wrath of the Lich King. Like Wrath of the Lich King is kinda like that perfect balance. It's, it's still it, the integrity of the journey of the leveling journey is still intact. It still takes a while to level up. It doesn't take 250 hours to get the 60, but it takes a while to level up. And then also, though, you have a lot of stuff in Wrath that you can do at endgame. You have lots of different raids. You have heroic dungeons that you can queue for. You now have heroic plus plus dungeons that you can queue. So, if, if you kind of like Classic Era more, but you, you're an endgame focused player, then you, you probably want to be in Wrath. And it's just really great to live in a time where we have all these different flavors of WoW. We're, we're really lucky. We live in a good time. I have to say, these guys are like really good farming material for me. Now, gr granted, we're not hitting consistently yet because the mace is still really un like low skill, but these guys are not super dangerous. They don't run away. They don't patrol very much. Their aggro range is very limited. And I just kind of like grinding on these guys. It's, it's pretty relaxing. That was a shock. That was a shock because it interrupted our spell casting. That must just be like an earth shock or or something like that. Yeah, it's like the shaman's earth shock in classic how it's an interrupt. That's what that in, that instant cast is that he hit us with. It, it's a shock that has an interrupt assigned to it. Have we cleared this place out faster than it can respawn? Is that what we've been able to do? I, gu I guess the mace is getting powerful enough. If we manage to clear this place out before any respawns have set in, that's kind of a first. That Oh, look at those big crits. Oh, this weapon is going to be so good. Once we get this skilled up and all of our weapon skill is maxed out, this, this mace is going to own. I, I feel really good about this. We, m we might even go back and try like do a seal of command build again, since we have a really slow weapon now. And we'll see how that goes.
Yeah, because the crits, the crits are getting out of hand even though we're not fully skilled up. It, it's looking really promising. Let's poke our heads out here a little bit and see if, oh, here we go, see if maybe we can get some of the vultures to come back up. We do need one more vulture meat, so if we can, I'd like to get that one done too. It'd be great to be able to finish both of these quests. When we first came here, I, I wasn't sure like how much we were going to be able to do. But it turns out we've been able to do quite a bit, and that is a good feeling. We'll come back here, but yeah, we'll go check for some buzzards and see if there are any up out here. And then we'll come back once all the ogres have respawned. Here we go. Here's our lucky guy right here. He's got our fourth item. Page, yeah, I would say check out Wrath of the Lich King. I would I would say check out Wrath. I would say check out Wrath of the Lich King, which is classic still. It's just the most current version of classic. Yeah, if you've if you want it to be chill and you like the journey, but you and you want to dungeon, but you don't have like a, a lot a lot of time, then I feel like your time would probably be best spent in Wrath of the Lich King, unless something in retail really really strikes you as awesome. I would always recommend people to check out Classic first. So yeah, check out Wrath. It's still Classic in the sense that like the journey is important and it does matter and the journey can still feel good. But the journey is not as long hour-wise, so you're still looking at lots of time, right? But you're looking at lots of time to progress through like three expansions, essentially. So, you know, it, it might take you like 180 hours to get a guy from 1 all the way to 80. But in doing that, you're going through vanilla content, Burning Crusade content, and Northrend content. So you get, you got three big journeys, you know, kind of wrapped together. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for like, how do I, how do I maximize my end game time? Then you might, you, you might want retail. If you have friends in retail, then retail is a, is an okay place to be. I would never send, like, a, a person who's going to play a lot of their time alone. I would not send you to retail. Only go to retail if most of the time that you're going to play, you're going to be doing stuff with friends. That would be the only way that I would send you to retail. Me, personally, I'm not, I'm not a fan of retail's five mans. I don't like the way Mythic Plus is. I haven't done Mythic Plus. I have zero plans to do Mythic Plus. So me personally, like I'm not I'm not a retail player because I, I don't have that static group of friends to do like raids and stuff with. And I don't I don't like farming endgame solo content and endgame solo gear just for the sake of getting the gear. I, I like to be able to use the gear for like hard content. So yeah, if you've got a static group, you want to do raids and, and instant stuff, go to retail. But if you're gonna be playing alone a lot, go to Wrath. The good thing is with your sub, you, you can try all versions of the game, you know, and kind of see what fits for you. I just don't have any friends, so... 
It's always been an easy choice what kind of player I am. And eventually in Wrath, you'll have some modern stuff. Like, eventually you'll have the Looking for Dungeon tool in Wrath. We don't have it right now. But by the Ice Crown patch, you'll have the Looking for Dungeon tool, which will be something that moves it, like, a little bit closer to how retail works when it comes to queuing up for content. Yeah, Lael, right now in history, this is the most value you can, you've can you ever had for your WoW sub. Yeah, we're at a point where you, you get the most value that you've ever gotten for it. Vic, that's an opinion, man. <laughs> I, I played lots of years in the game with a guild, doing guild stuff. And there, there are lots of people that enjoy this game completely solo who don't do a lot of group stuff. Um, and like, I do pug stuff when we're playing a version of the game that allows us to just group up with people. Then I don't, I don't mind doing pug five men's. We've done a handful of raids in Wrath and those were fun. I avoid endgame stuff right now because I, I don't care about it. I, I don't care about farming up gear to do the next thing when the next thing is Ice Crown and Ice Crown is going to be the end of Wrath, you know? But no, there are lots of people who enjoy playing the game solo. It's a big, alive feeling RPG world, so of course that's going to draw even solo players to the game. You know, you still get to go on all kinds of fun adventures. You have the choice to group up with people that you meet in the world, unless you're playing hardcore. And yeah, you can still definitely have a great time uh, in basically any version of the game as a solo player, if you have that mindset. And it's just all about mindset, you know? You, you are obviously a person who, when you play an online game, you feel like you need to play with other people. And that's totally fine. The game allows you to do that, but the game also allows you to play on your own different strokes for different folks, you know what I mean? And then playing with playing with a solo mindset doesn't lock you into that, you know? At any moment, you can meet some cool people and you can start playing with their guild, you know? That's the great thing about the game is you get, you get to experience it organically and have experiences as, as they happen. All right, Miles, exactly. The whole world is full of people. It doesn't mean we want to go out and socialize and interact with everybody every day. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. You can be as sociable or as solo as you would like to be. And, like, also, like... It's okay to not understand what another person gets out of the game. You know what I mean? It's okay to not understand. The good thing is, a person feeling a certain way and enjoying a certain thing, it doesn't require you to understand it for them to be able to do that. That's the, gr that's the great thing about it. Lael, I feel that way too. I feel that definitely compared to retail, people are a little bit more hospitable. They're a little bit more forgiving. And in, in retail, especially when you're talking about like mythics and stuff, like people have been trained that they can't be forgiving. They can't be forgiving of someone else's mistakes because someone else's mistakes is effing up their key. It's costing them time. And so Blizzard created a game uh, where the time pressures and the thought of like losing your key or effing up in some way it, it creates negativity among people. If you don't perform perfectly, if you're the one who's had some kind of problem, then you are going to get ostracized from like any pug mythic group very, very quickly. And it does get toxic really quick. That's why I, I always recommend people who want to play retail to make sure you just have a static group of people who you actually like to play with. 
don't don't try to go out there as a mythic player and like expect to get awesome pugs full of kind people who are willing to teach you how, how to play because that, that's absolutely not what you're gonna find Page. Yeah, absolutely. People do professions in hardcore. Yep, yep. We have mining. We have mining. We, we dropped blacksmithing because I, I couldn't keep up with it. It takes too much ore to do blacksmithing and I'm too lazy of a person to like farm it. So I ended up dropping blacksmithing. Uh, in the future, we're going to do herbalism alchemy on all of our hardcore characters because every class benefits from potions. Whether you need health pots or you need mana pots. Maybe you need elixirs to buff you. Everybody can benefit from herbalism alchemy. So in the future, that is what we are going to run. Johnny, I'm the same way, but the problem with Mythic is that Mythic is a time trial. So if you're in someone's Mythic group and you take a lackadaisical approach to dying or having to like respawn and run back in, they, they're, they're vicious. A lot of times they'll just kick you. And because it's all about the time trial, when you're talking about like higher Mythic keys, you got to go, go fast, go, go, go. You gotta learn those skips, uh, and that's what the game has kind of become for Mythic 5-man content. When the raids aren't like that, you know, I feel like you could be a retail player and it's easy to just avoid the 5-man content entirely. Because yeah, in a raid, I feel like people still don't care. Like, you wipe in a raid, you go again. You know what I mean? There's no time trial on the line, someone's key is not gonna devolve because you died. You're just gonna try the boss again. And that's why, yeah, for me too, if I ever got back into retail at Endgame, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be Mythic 5-mans. I'm not going to touch that cesspool with a 10 foot long pole, absolutely never again. But I, but I wouldn't mind doing raids, because I, I feel like the raids is, is, it can be a little bit more casual depending on the guys that you're playing with. There's just not that pressure to go, 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 you know. I didn't notice it, but we completed the buzzard quest, and we've completed the scrap metal quest, so we're we're actually doing pretty good. Faraway Ranger says, I'm a cutting edge mythic raider in retail. There's this weird grouping of people that are very toxic up until mythic plus 20. Yeah, because up until mythic plus 20, man, people are feeling the fucking pressure to get up to mythic plus 20. And they feel like if they can't get to that threshold and if they can't be that mythic player, like what they see on the TV, then they are a piece of shit who shouldn't even bother playing the game. That's what gets people worked up, is when they're trying to get to where you're at, but they probably don't have like a good group around them to get them there, so they're trying to do it in pugs. And then anybody makes a mistake that fucks up their key, that's that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the group of people that are trying to make it. You know what I mean? But that's the majority of people. The majority of people are not where you're at. <laughs> the majority of people are, tr are they, they think they're trying to make it. And so when somebody messes them up, they get fucking pissed. That's That's what the game is. The game is everybody's seeing people do it at, at, at a really high level. They're watching people do it at a really high level. And they feel like if I can't do it that way, if my groups can't go like that, then what the fuck is the point of being here? Which is a terrible mindset to have about anything in life. To look at somebody else and how they're doing something and to think to yourself, I have to do it like that. And if we can't do it like that, then we are fucking failing. What an awful way to have to look at a video game. What an awful way to have to look at anything, but what a really truly awful way to have to look at a video game. So I believe you. Yeah, people get to your point and you're chill. You're like, cool, we're good. We got our solid group of guys. We go out and we kick ass and we have a good time doing it uh, because you're not in a pug full of people who might not know what they're doing 
full of people who, you know, just don't have the skill or don't have the gear or don't have the attention span, but they all want to be there. They all want to be there, and some of them can't be. And they get pissed. Of Mike says, Robert chops a lot more F-bombs in a live stream than recorded videos. Yeah. In recorded videos, I, I can just avoid topics that, that I feel strongly about. You know what I mean? Rob, thank you so much, man. That's super generous of you. I appreciate that. Yeah, in the recordings, I just avoid talking about stuff that I feel strongly about. It's really easy. Especially now that I can I can talk about those things with you guys in the stream. I, I feel even less encouraged to talk about these kinds of things in the pre-recordings. And they can just be like a more chill place to be. But yeah, the, there are obviously things... I love the game. And I, I've loved it for 20 years. So there are things that I feel strongly ab about. And uh, my wife says it's a really bad habit and really low brow of me. But when I when I get like passionate about something, I do swear more. Yeah, it's a sign of my lowly birth. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks so much, man. That's awesome. You guys are really generous. I appreciate that. And see, you guys you guys are building negative encouragement because the more F-bombs I drop now, I'm like, am I going to get more super chats the more F-bombs I drop? <laughs> Don't build that into me. Great to meet you. Uh, let's see. Ooh. We just got a two-handed mace. I'm, I'm like looking at a shield and stuff. Oh, hey. Oh, damn. Look at this. Ten strength, nine stam. Pork baby says a reverse, reverse swear jar. Yeah. Like the more you swear, the more money goes in. See you soon. Hey, I like those boots. What, what a fruitful day it's been for us here in the Badlands. This has been really great. Oh, they even look kind of cool. What's on your mind? It is a huge upgrade. Yeah. Absolutely. We've got a couple of huge upgrades now from this zone, so I'm really happy about that. Where does the vulture stuff turn in? Do we... Do, is that what we just... No, down here. Okay. Vultures are down here. They were level 12 boots, were they? Yeah, I believe it. Oh, man. Level 12 boots. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yep. Let's head over this way. I want to see if we can find some of these dwarves that are uh, that are not grouped up. Ha says for the swear jar. I appreciate you, man. That's super generous of you. I I do try not to curse unless I feel like it's impactful. Johnny Hoover, thank you so much, man. You guys, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but you're being super generous, and I appreciate it. You're trying to keep the stream going, aren't you? How long have we been at it? Only, only two and a half hours. That's not that's not a super long time. Okay. Well, we have a couple of things going on here. It seems like... It seems like there would be enemies that are not grouped up. But we also have this patrol to deal with. Uh, which is going to be a little bit difficult. They've stopped moving for the moment, which... Yeah, here we go. Let's get them on the road again. Let's let them get out of here. And then I'm going to start over on the hill over here. We'll kind of work our way around. What we're not going to do is we're not going to go inside the keep. It's all the testosterone flowing from my workouts, Faraway Ranger. Is that why I dropped so many F-bombs? It, it could be. I'm an older guy, so I don't know like exactly how much testosterone I'm generating at this point from my, like, my mid-range, like, medium workouts. It could be a substantial amount, you know. I don't do any supplements or anything besides protein. I'm not even, I don't even work in creatine at all right now. So I don't know if it's that. But, but it could be. How old? I'm going to be 40 in January. So, yeah, January I'll be 40. Mm-hmm. Yes way. I wish I don't know. I don't know. I wish it was not the case. I would not lie about this. I would usually when people lie about their age, it's to keep them it's to keep them younger. You thought like 30. It's the camera and lighting, man. If you saw me in real life, you know, if you could see the creases in my forehead or like the the crow's feet around my eyes, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, dude's 40." Wow, thank you, man. At least 38 and a half. 
Brock McMullen says, I love the channel, have watched for a while, and watching while working from home today has been a treat. Brock, thank you so much, man. That's really generous of you, and I appreciate you being here and hanging out. That's awesome. Johnny says, I wish I was 40 again, to even be in my 40s. Yeah, I know. I feel bad. I'm like, oh, I'm old. And then people always remind me that, like, I'm not the oldest person around. But I guess what I mean is, like, comparatively to my life, comparatively to my lifestyle. I have an older numeric age than you might expect based on how I live my life. I don't feel like I'm 40 at all. I, I usually feel like I'm a 12 year old. You know, I'm either, I'm either playing a video game or I'm outside playing basketball with my kid or we're throwing frisbees to the dogs or we're going on walks or I'm eating cold pizza um, or I'm watching my wife play single player. I'm always doing something that just, I'm, I'm living the life of like a teenager essentially. But my physical age is, is, is just going, it's not stopping. Marlena, for all the cool streams and videos, thank you so much. You guys are so generous right now. That's awesome. I appreciate that. A 40-year-old playing a 20-year-old game. Yeah, yeah, Vic. Yeah, it's sad, man, but I have a great time. <laughs> That's the thing about it is that, yeah, I've been playing the game for 20 years, and I still love it, and I still have fun playing it. So, what are you going to do, you know? Sometimes you just get really lucky and you just become a person that's really easy to please. Ra, one day we will play together. That's true. I, I hope that it can be either in the hardcore servers or maybe in, in like a future season. Thank you, my man. Faraway Ranger, thanks for being around so long. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you were able to find the channel. Uh, I feel like YouTube does a medium job of, like, showing people the channel, you know? It, it's obviously a really small channel, and, like, interestingly, like, sometimes, like, parts of your YouTube channel grow and other parts don't. So, like, for me, my numbers are pretty good statistically, but getting, uh, like, new audiences and ha having people discover your channel is just, like, it's really hard. That's why I only have 23,000 subs. My kid was like, when are you going to get your YouTube play button for your for your wall? I'm like, that's at 100,000. I'm like, at, at this rate, I'll be 72 years old when I get my 100,000 plaque. <laughs> he said, he said, I'll be sad when you're gone, Dad, but I would love to carry on your channel for you. <laughs> like, oh, that's a little creepy, but thank you. Marlena, you heard about my channel from someone in Asmongold's comments? Damn. That's cool to know. I didn't think I would be on the radar of anybody who, like, hung out in Asmund's chat. And I love Asmund Gold. Um, I think he's a great guy. But I, I didn't I didn't really expect anyone in his chat to even know who I was, because I feel like that's, like, a more hardcore type of player than I am. Obviously, I'm way wrong. Be said I was the first on the list when you searched Hardcore WoW. Yeah, that's because people like Kargaz have had to take down all of their content because they're jerks. So they don't get to have their YouTube content up anymore. Otherwise, you'd have found Kargaz. Like, three weeks ago, if you'd have searched Hardcore WoW, Kargaz would be the first, the top search. Absolutely. Vic, you see a video of mine that has 300,000 views. That is probably a, a episode one of a retail Let's Play. It's probably the human warrior you're talking about. Every once in a while, throughout the history of my channel, it's happened twice. Where the YouTube algorithm has grabbed onto one video, and then in like one day you'll get 30,000 views on it. And it just carries and carries and carries, and then it stops. And then YouTube drops it like it's a piece of garbage and never picks it up again. <laughs> But yeah, sometimes the algorithm will like really push a video. It happened to the Warrior video. It happened to episode one of the Retail Warlock. And the shitty thing is, guys, this is the shitty reality of it. The only time YouTube has really picked up my videos in that way have been retail videos. I've never once had the algorithm grab a classic video and really just pop it off and show it to lots and lots and lots of people. And I don't know why. So, yeah. I don't know why. 
Pork baby, you could see my channel blowing up if official hardcore servers pop off. Yeah, maybe. I feel like we're at the height of hardcore popularity right now. Honestly, I, I don't know if we're going to get like more hardcore popularity because of the servers. I feel like we're at the height, but it could be. I hope so. Uh, Weston Burger says, I, I don't know if you know Narc, but he clipped your video and his video. I, I don't know who Narc is or what kind of person he is or what kind of content he does. Nope. I know that uh, a couple years ago, Preach used a clip of mine from Shadowfang Keep. He was doing his like top 10 favorite dungeons, top like least favorite. And he clipped one of my, my first Night Elf Warrior through Shadowfang Keep. And he clipped that. And I think the only reason he clipped it was I published my videos in 1440. Th those might have been in 4K. And I, I think he just clipped it because I had a good camera angle and good video quality. So yeah, Preach just clipped one of my videos. Narc is cool. <laughs> Far away ranger, did I hear what happened with Cargaz? Yeah, I heard enough, and I talked about it enough. I can't, I can't talk about it anymore, unfortunately. It, it, it was one of those topics that elicited a record number of f bombs in a condensed period of time. So you, you can like interpret that as my reaction to what I know about that situation. I, I just can't talk about it again. <laughs> What, what kind of content does Narc do? Does he do hardcore classic content? Does he make What's like instructional right? videos? Like what kind of stuff does he do? I'm assuming he doesn't do like straight out let's plays, right? Off with it. Kevin, I was the first on the list when you searched classic Wrath of the Lich King playthroughs. Yeah, I think that's because not a lot of people do let's plays of WoW the way that I've done. But I also don't think that a lot of people are interested in that kind of content. He, he does just MMO content, Weston. Okay. That's cool. What what did he clip of mine? I just wonder what he could have clipped. Probably just some random gameplay. Vic, you, you gotta look up uh, Google Rested XP Add-on Scandal or Rested XP Bullshit. <laughs> and you will you will find a lot of reading material that I think you might enjoy. Yeah. Nart does WoW Hardcore on Twitch. Right on. I feel like I was trying to get down here to uh, to turn things in and we just kind of had a convo. You guys were really popping off for a while and I got distracted trying to keep up with chat. You guys are great. You guys are great. You're making it hard for me to keep up with chat. I love it. <laughs> he clipped one of my paladin content. Could have been, it could have been like the Wrath, the Wrath of Lich King paladin. That's neat. I got the best deals anywhere. Power stones and pearl diving. Eight on Alium power stones. Be good. Hey, how you doing? Pearl diving. Have a good one. Okay, I think we might have took a quest. Yeah, we, we took some plus. I didn't see that these were elite quests. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do those ones. Raw 39 today? Nah, I don't think we're going to hit 39 today. That's probably not going to happen. Man, that's that's wishful thinking, though. I, I think I want to head back to uh, to the marsh. I think maybe I want to head back to the marsh. I don't know how much more I want to do here. We could work on getting these iridium flakes. You know, we could do that. What's the uh, what's the reward from the from the iridium flakes? Why and why am I just not seeing it anywhere? That's a little bit weird. Uh, let's see. Let's let's drop these ones that we picked up. There's, there's no item or anything for the reward. 
Pearl diving is also off as an elite quest off the coast, yeah. <laughs> Rob, that's not entirely wrong. <laughs> to up to a certain point, you're you're not wrong. A twenty four hour stream to reach forty, I would be dead. I wouldn't I wouldn't make it and I wouldn't want to subject anybody to me after I've been at the computer for that long. It would be it would be dire at that point if I if I was trying to play for that long consecutively. I would only, I, you know, one day maybe I would do something like that for charity. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna destroy myself physically, mentally, and emotionally, I would only ever do that for charity and probably not for my own benefit. <laughs> Roth, thank you so much, man. Hashtag Super Chat Thirty Nine today. <laughs> Brock, thank you for the membership, man. I appreciate that and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I do need to pick something to work on, and we need to we need to make a plan here. And I, I think that plan will probably involve getting out of the Badlands. Yeah, as we uh, as we pull just too much. Let's work on let's work on getting out of the Badlands. We'll probably just hearth out after this fight. We we are trying to leash the one. We're trying to do our our old leashy trick. There we go. We got him. We got him. Let's get a heal in so we don't get crit to death. Alright, with that done, I, I think it's okay to get out of here for now. I think I would like to head back to Duswallow Marsh, so we need to catch a boat from Booty Bay. And we could just like take a couple of deep breaths, we're not in danger for a minute. We can appreciate the uh, the upgrade that we got, you know, start cracking heads with it somewhere else. Yeah. Empty out the inventory here. We got this nice one-handed mace too. We, we got a couple of one-handed maces. It's like I've been asking the universe for a good one-handed weapon for a while so that we can try out Prospect, but what I, I really wanted like a blue or an epic, you know? I really want, if we were going to try out Prospect, I really wanted to get a blue or an epic before we do that. It, w it would take a blue or an epic to get me to, uh, to go prod, I think. And that could even be like a blue or epic shield w would probably get me there too. I it wouldn't necessarily have to be a weapon, but it had to be a weapon or a shield that was blue or better. Let's let's go catch a boat. Oh, the boat is there. The boat is there. But are we going to make the boat? I don't think so because we, we didn't see it pull up, which means it's been there for a minute. We're probably going to get it like just as it's pulling away. I'm going to try to jump onto it. Like I'm going to try to connect to some part of it that will that will get us where we got to go. Then it, okay, maybe we're good. Oh damn, we got really really lucky. We got so lucky. I thought we were going to have to like jump and try to stick to the side. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that, actually. Not gonna lie.
Yeah, is today Thursday? Today is Thursday. I, I think we'll get our mount by like Sunday. I'm pretty sure that by the end of the weekend, we should be able to have our mount. Yeah, because we'll probably get 39 tomorrow. I, I think we'll absolutely get 39 tomorrow, and then I think it's going to take two days to get from 39 to 40. Unless something crazy happens and we find like a bunch of quests to do. That would be like the only way. Patrick, how many cups of coffee do I drink a day? Man, I, if I think about it for a minute, I can tell you the exact amount of ounces that I drink on most days because my Yeti mug I fill with uh, 10 and then 8. So 18 to 20 ounces per mug fill. I fill the mug two separate times during the day and then I do 12 ounces in the evening. So 20, 40, anywhere from 40 to 70 ounces in a 24 hour period. Yeah, which a doctor would probably tell you is too much, but I've, I've drank more. The Yeti cup, knowing that it only fits about 20 ounces, really helps me monitor like how much I intake. And then having the Keurig machine, that only it, the highest it'll make it once, it, it'll make 8, 10, or 12 ounces. So I usually do 10, 8, and then a little bit of milk, and that fills up the coffee. And so yeah, anywhere from like 50, and then like, I, you know, some evenings I drink more coffee than others, so... 50 to 70 ounces a day. Mm-hmm. Pork Baby, do I remember getting my first mountain WoW? Yeah, it was on my first tour in Warrior. I even remember farming the wolves in the Badlands where we just were for their soft bushy tails because soft bushy tails sold for quite a bit. Talk to me! And, uh... I definitely and I and I didn't know where to get the mount when I finally had the money. I had to like get a hold of my friend and he had to explain to me that I had to go back to Thunder Bluff and then run to Bloodhoof Village. And so yeah, I, I definitely remember the first time getting my mount, like just sitting there knowing that I was like getting so close with gold. Yeah. Definitely a, a big, big moment. Right back. The Kodo was cool, yeah. I, I really liked the Torin. For my first character that got to max, it, it was a good run. And that's a character that I, I can't find that character anymore. By all accounts, he, he should exist on the Dalaran server. And it should be on one of the two accounts that I currently have, because I don't I never really was a person to have a lot of different accounts. I ended up with a second account because of recruiter friend stuff back in the day. Uh, I was I ran recruiter friend with a, a buddy of mine to get a bunch of quick levels back when you can do that, and so I ended up with a second account. But my my OG warrior is not on either account. It's weird. I, I don't think I would have ever deleted him. And I have other characters on Dalaran that I remember like playing around the same era, the same time. So it's weird that like those characters exist, but he doesn't. Page, the first epic item that I ever looted in the game was an axe, and I believe it dropped for me in, in uh, Ungoral Crater. I remember getting like an epic axe to drop in Ungoral Crater, and I don't know which axe it was. We've yet to get an epic on any hardcore run, but I think we're getting to the level where, where an epic might be possible. Somebody told me that the, the level threshold, you know, before which we're not going to see any epics. It might have been like 40 or 45 after that we might have a chance at some epic drops. That would be super cool. Okay, what are we doing here? We can go over... I, I think I want to do the spiders first, because I'm pretty sure that we're going to get a follow-up to kill a named murloc that's going to be kind of right over in this area. So let's see if we can head all the way out here. We also have, uh, we have this we can do. Yeah, we have the Shady Rest Inn stuff to do. Maybe we'll work on that as well. That could be some fairly easy experience, unless any of you guys can foresee, like, a problem we might have. I don't think we do Lieutenant Pavel Wreath yet, but we can do Suspicious Hoofprints and the Black Shield. Yeah, we'll, we'll go fight the spiders, and then we will find a safe route down to the Shady Rest Inn. We, we won't run through Brackenwall Village. 
I, I will keep in my head that it's there. I know you guys get kind of stressed out when I'm in that area. So I'll do my best to not encroach up upon the Horde Town. Absolutely. Brock, your first epic was Wall of the Dead. It dropped in Black Rock Depths. You scared your parents when you freaked out about it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, you start screaming, like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And you're still screaming. You're like, nothing's wrong. Then stop screaming. No. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I feel like I might have got that shield to drop on our Season of Mastery Warrior. I remember an epic shield dropping for me in BRD during, and I thought it was during a season of mastery. I'm not sure if it was the same shield. But I remember just an epic bind on equip shield dropping and I needed that sucker so fast. All right, I have to remind myself that even though we've been doing really good, even though we have a lot of upgrades, that uh, this area is still pretty dangerous and that we actually left here previously because of how dangerous it felt, so... I, I think at the road fork here, I have to slowly clear to the west. I think that's probably going to be the safest way to do it. We, we really don't... there's not like a road that's going to get us there, essentially. Corbin, you wish you can group up more in Hardcore? Yeah, I understand you, man. I, I, I want that to be, like, the one restriction that they kind of remove. I'd like, for pe I'd like for people to be able to group up to do elite villages in the world. You know, like, when you come ac across, like, a Pyrewood village type of situation, or, you know, there are the Ogres in Lak Modan up in the northeast. I, I want people to be able to form groups for the expressed purpose of hunting and killing elites. Because I think that, like, tackling elites in the open world is super fun. And I also feel like being able to group up a little bit more would be good. I'm also one of those people, like, I, I don't mind the concept of people being able to farm dungeons over and over again on their hardcore characters. If that's what they want to do, if they want to risk it in dungeon runs. Uh, and they want to farm gear, I'm okay with that. A lot of people aren't okay with that, surprisingly, because I, uh, people have this misconstrued idea that if people could farm dungeons, that people would stop exploring out in the open world, and that would make the open world, like, less inhabited. And I fundamentally think that that's incorrect. I don't think that there are many people in Hardcore Classic who would ever think, I'm gonna farm dungeons over and over and over to level up. They're gonna farm them to get some good gear, but keep in mind, dungeons are incredibly risky. So I don't think that letting us farm dungeons would impact the open world negatively. Also keep in mind that uh, eventually in Hardcore, there aren't going to be people around you if you live long enough. If you live long enough, you're going to be one of the few people that live. And you're going to do like a slash who, and there aren't going to be a lot of people around. And that's not going to be because they're farming dungeons, it's going to be because they're dead. So yeah, I, I wish we could do as many five mans as we wanted. And I wish that we could group up to do elite villages. MJ, your sister hates this place because it literally reminds her of Florida. <laughs> Including the crocodiles that will kill you, right? The amount of time she died here is comically high. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> it's just brutal. I love it. <laughs> it, 
it's so hard to see. Like you zoom your camera out, hoping to get a better view of the surroundings, and then you can't see anything. And you're like, oh, okay, what what do I do now? I zoom in, and all of your instincts in hardcore say, don't zoom in that much, because look, we we got a buddy, we got a lurker behind us, uh, and trying to sneak up on us. But you gotta ha you gotta have your head on a swivel if you're gonna zoom in this much. Which is hard to do while, while still fighting. Nicholas, why is my character not bald? Because I don't have to have my character look like me. You guys are lucky that I didn't do body type B for this and that I'd have to listen to questions in every stream. Why'd you choose body type B? Why do you think you chose body type B? It seems like you play body type B a lot. O okay. <laughs> so just be happy that we're playing body type A. Alright. <laughs> I don't really like how the bald human looks. So I figured, you know, for my virtual character, I, I can have hair. And like, I'm not really bald. I shaved my head the other day. I can grow hair, it's just not super impressive. It, it'd probably be like Asmongold's hair. Actually, that's that's rude, man. Asmongold's hair looks really good these days. That, that was just a rude thing for me to say. Because yeah, my hair would not look that good, even if I grew it out. But as far as like, the, the hairline would probably be similar, right? The hairline would probably be similar if I grew my hair out. Back when I was a teenager in my 20s, my hair was down to my shoulders. And I, and I used to dye it all kinds of fun colors. And that's probably like part of what killed it. Are there horde players that can attack us? We're not PvP flagged. So nobody should be able to stroll up and attack us. Hey Corbin, I played I played WoW when I should have been at college, <laughs> but yeah, my 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 college career was necessarily quick and over. Yeah, it, it didn't it didn't make it. I I was never a classroom learner. It turns out, and it, I learned that about myself. Like before, I spent a shit ton of money going to school. I learned that it, it wasn't going to be fruitful for me. But definitely played all through that time in my life. That's true of a lot of people. You never stop playing completely. You, you take breaks. Yeah. I have had times in my life when I thought I was done playing the game. And I have always come back. Yep. T two distinct times in my history I remember that I thought I would never play WoW again. One of them was attached to a time in my life when I didn't think I was going to play video games again. It was hard for me to- I was- I was working a job. It was a hard job, I didn't really like it. When, when I got home from work I was dead tired and I'd fall asleep by like 6pm and that went on for a long time. And I thought to myself like, yeah, that's it. I, I don't have conscious time to spend playing video games anymore. Eventually, I left that job. <laughs> Eventually that was actually the solution, was to not work that kind of job. So, that was in my, like, late teens, early 20s. Jason, you're going to one of those meetings, the hour-long ones that, that could have been an email? Yep. 
I, I get you. I've, I've been a part of a lot of those meetings. At, at my wife's work, they actually limit meetings to like less, they have to be less than an hour and you have to have an agenda before you're allowed to have a meeting. And if your agenda is bullshit, the meeting doesn't happen. So they, they try to respect people's time a little bit more. Corbin, have I played on Turtle WoW? I haven't. And I, I know that it's really awesome. And the thing is, like, if I like it, if I were to play it and like it, I can't do anything with it because, you know, technically we're not supposed to play on Blizzard pri on, pri on private servers. Excuse me. We're not supposed to play on private servers and Blizzard doesn't like it. So I couldn't do it uh, as a stream and I couldn't put it on YouTube. And the last thing I wanted was to like really love this thing called Turtle Wow and not be able to play it. So I've never checked it out and unfortunately because of what I do I probably never will check it out. Unless something drastic were to happen with the Blizzard Terms of Service where Layla were like okay about that stuff to a point where like if I could stream it and make content about it then I would play it. But since I can't, I can't. Alright, Ross says Turtle is cool but illegal. Yes, technically that's that's absolutely right, yeah. The same as Ascension is probably cool, but illegal, right? It's like, because they change the game rules, you know, the game is is different. And they probably do it in fun and interesting ways. And what I, what I hope for <laughs> is that I hope eventually someone at Blizzard thinks, Hey, when we do Seasons of WoW, we should take some of these ideas from places like Turtle WoW and places like Ascension. And we should wrap some of these actual ideas into our seasonal stuff. That's what I'd really like to see, and I would love to see them work directly with the people who created those private servers. I would like to see them cut them a fat, juicy check and say, Hey, we're going to buy this idea from you flat out. Buy it. You're not going to work for us. We're going to purchase these ideas. We're going to put them into a season of WoW, and we're going to have to shut you down, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they'd probably have to still shut them down, but I wish they can give them a fat, juicy check and, like, copy their work, basically. That's what I would do. <laughs> like, I would let I would let the people who love the game make the cool ass content for it, and then I would go to them and I would buy it from them. You know, for a lot of money. I would not employ them because I don't think that anybody should seek to be employed by someone like Blizzard. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say employ them, but I'd say like buy their ideas, buy their ideas, buy their coding, buy it from them. Blizzard, you can do this. But more accurately, you you can't do this because Activision would never allow it. <laughs> I feel like a Blizzard that is self-owned, like if we had a Blizzard that was still self-owned and operated, then you might see collaboration like that with parts of the community. But under Activision, you're never going to see it. Yeah, the mace, the mace feels really good. You know, we were we were struggling with these guys the last time we were here. I think we gained a couple levels too. Obviously, a couple levels always helps. But yeah, the mace feels good. Our current level versus these guys feels really good. This feels this went from being like a terrifying place to be to being an okay place to be. Uh, this feels this feels safer than the Badlands right now. I, I don't know that it is safer than the Badlands, but it, it feels that way at the moment. 
I, I worry about the Murlocs, obviously. 366 crit. Are you kidding me with the 366 crit? Jeez. I worry about the Murlocs still, because they're they're they run. They're squiggly. They're squiggly and they run. And I don't really like either of those two attributes. So I'm kind of worried about the Murlocs. But this quest has been okay. We were 35 or 36 last time. Yeah, that's what it felt like. I felt like it had been at least two levels that we gained. Because when we bailed out of here, we bailed out of here fast and we bailed out of here permanently. Like, we, we didn't go back. And now things are, are actually green over here, so that's nice to see. The interesting thing is, we're still not capped out with skill. And we've been at it for a while. We're gonna have to find like at least a decent axe soon just to equip, just to keep our skill up. You know what I mean? Like we might have to buy like a vendor axe. Cause well, I don't want anything to get too far behind again. We could probably take the Murlocs, but the problem is gonna come when the runners run into the three packs. And then we have a runner and a three pack. <laughs> and then we're gonna be the runner. Yeah. So, it's gonna, it's gonna be a problem. We might be able to deal with it, but they're gonna be problematic. It's gonna be about trying to pull them far away from their fellows. And doing it semi-safely. Pillagers, Pauldrons of the Bear. I think the, the stuff we got recently is gonna be better than this, right? Yeah, I mean, that's cool, but we got 8, 6, and 2. Could have used those when we came here the first time, had these dropped, that would have been super useful. But look, RN Jesus is thinking about us. So we do need to keep like, putting good thoughts out to reality and, and explaining to the universe the kinds of items we would like to have drop. And so yeah, I think I'm just still thinking about either a blue or epic weapon. It's never too early to start thinking about your next weapon upgrade. That's kind of what I've realized. It's never too early. I wanted to drink before that pull, and he knew that. He knew that I wanted to drink. I have a feeling that, uh, you know, I feel like on this character, we're going to see at least one epic drop. I feel like that's pretty standard. Like, if you play a character all the way to max, and y you get to max level, like, even if it's not a weapon that you need for your class, I feel like eventually we would see an epic drop. The cool thing about being a, a paladin or a warrior is that you have a lot of different weapons you can equip. Which is going to make any kind of world drop you get more likely to be something that you can use. Shaman is almost the same. Like, what can you use on the Shaman? You can use two-handed maces, two-handed axes, one-handed maces, one-handed axes, stabs. I don't know if you can use daggers on a Shaman in Classic Era. Corbin asks, does one life apply once you reach 60? That's a good question. Some people take the immortality path. You know, it's kind of built into the rules that once you hit 60, you can make your character immortal. Which is just you saying that if you die, you get to res. And yeah, that seems like a better way to play. Uh, obviously, there are content creators who do hardcore raids, and that way, if they die, they die. That's not really valuable to do if, unless you're a content creator. I, I would not advise anybody to get to level 60, beat the challenge, and then do a raid, die in the raid, and delete your character. Don't do that. If you complete the challenge, and you get the 60, and you want a raid, yes, you should consider your character immortal, and you should just have a good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you're a content creator, you're immortal, right? Now, there are lots of people who do the hardcore raids, you know. By lots of people, I mean a handful of guys making content about it. Some, yeah, Alex points out, some people are immortal from level 1. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely, even on this server, even while playing hardcore, some people are, are immortal from level 1. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that there is a fair amount, especially on these servers, the way they're run. Like, sometimes people put 100 hours into the character, they die, and then they say, you know what, I'm going to keep going. I've had a great time, I love this character a lot, 
and I'm gonna keep playing it. I'm gonna keep trying not to die, but I, I think a lot of people get to a point where they, they do die. Vlad, will I be playing on Blizz's Hardcore Realms? Absolutely. Yep, yep, we're gonna be doing a Tauren Shaman. Whenever those happen, I, with all the other Blizzard releases, my prophecy theory timeline is that we see those in late August or early September because they said summer. Summer extends all the way to September 20th here in the States. So, in this hemisphere, I guess you could say. So yeah, the summer season could go to September 20th and uh, they're doing 10.1.5 is going to come out on like July 20th. So that, that scratches off July. June we got TOC, July we get retail patch, and then August or September we will get uh, hardcore servers. And then by November, December we're going to get a new season of Classic Era. And yeah, the new season will probably start late into the winter. They said 2023, so it has to be November or December. But yeah, I think we get that a few months after the hardcore. Yeah, Mulgar is going to be great. I can't wait to see Mulgar again. Hey, we're actually done with this quest. I, I just didn't notice. I was going to keep killing. Let's carefully make our way back to the cabin. Alex, I am going, I'm going two-handed enhancement for our Shami. And I, and I don't I don't know if it's like optimal, but I know it can be done. And I just oh man, I love the two-handed magical warrior vibe that the that the shaman gets to have when it's dual when it's doing a big two-handed weapon, you know. So I'm gonna do two-handed enhancement. I want to see the big crits. That's how we're gonna do it. But that being said, I, I'm not sure what the ideal thing is. Somebody told me that leveling as el elemental was not really good, that leveling enhancement in classic era is the way to go. But I think a lot of people probably go the dual wield route once you can dual wield at level 40 or whatever it is. But yeah, I have a lot of fun on Shaman when I can have a big two-hander. That's why we're going with the Tauren, because I know that the animation swings and stuff for the two-hander will be okay. The last time we did Shaman was in Wrath, we did the, the Troll Shaman, and she just didn't she just didn't have any really good like weapon animations. All the weapon swings looked kinda clunky and strange. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go Torin. Just a big beefy Torin. Ra. <laughs> Thank you, man. You've been super generous today. I appreciate it. I, I, as I said, I don't think we're going to hit 39 today. I'm going to play for a bit more, though, you know. But I, but I don't think we're getting 39 today. I appreciate you, though. Yeah, you, you feel like I'm close to 40, Vlad. But we, we've got a lot of playtime to go. Yeah, I think by Sunday. Sunday, we'll probably get our mount. So, and that's assuming today is Thursday, which I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that today is Thursday. And if today is Thursday, we will have our mount by Sunday at the latest. To be, like, realistic with the timetable. But yeah, it seems like we're gonna get there, you know. We, we've been in a lot of really bad situations, and we've managed to survive them. I don't want to jinx it, but... It's been good. It's even when things are going bad, there's like a way through it, you know what I mean? Even when things are going bad, there's been a way through it. Yeah, it's going to happen this week, but it will probably be the last day of the week that it happens. But then there are weird people who think that Sunday is the beginning of the week, like on the calendar. So I guess it's either, like, depending on how you look at it, it'll be the ending of this week or the beginning of next. But I count Sunday as the end of the week. Yeah, we're definitely going to have it by then. I don't like the stealth spiders. I don't think that spiders need anything else to make them scarier. I don't think they need to actually be giant and be able to be in stealth. I think that's kind of unfair. 
Brock, the first time you hit 40 was on your hunter grinding gorillas in Strangletor. I mean, that's a way to go because, yeah, especially you need that gold money, right? As a hunter, you're going to need to buy your mountain stuff. We, we got lucky, you know, on the Paladin. We don't have to worry about gold. It's kind of like cheating. We That being said, though, if we had to worry about gold, we'd be in a pretty darn good spot right now. You know, if we started grinding right now, we ground out a level and a half. We'd have more than enough mount money. So we actually ended up in a decent spot gold-wise just because we're selling everything. Basically selling everything. Yeah, definitely definitely working in grinding with quests. Like finding those quests that are like just a really low drop rate and just hanging out in those areas for a while. I still think eventually we'll do some more grinding on those ogres in the Badlands because they were a decent level. They gave really good XP and they were easy to fight. You know, they didn't run, they didn't heal, they didn't hurt us very much. And so I am definitely like earmarking those ogres as a place where whenever we want to, we just, we have nothing else to do. Let's go kill some ogres. You know, they're humanoids, so they could, they could possibly drop some gear. Like, I don't know exactly what their loot tables look like, but we could, we can get some random drops off of them and they're just so easy to fight. Yeah, I wish I had a skinner to follow me around in places to skin all the things I leave, because it is a huge waste. Well, I'd love to see like a season of WoW where they open up professions and you can take like four main professions, you know, so you could be like skinner, leather worker, herbalism, alchemy. That would be pretty neat. It would probably break the game in fun ways that we wouldn't entirely anticipate, but for like a seasonal thing that could be pretty cool. I think to have to have compelling seasonal content, they need to be willing to do things to the game that are going to break the balance of it, right? We, we aren't going to keep things balanced between classes, specs, professions when we're doing seasonal stuff. It, it's it's going to break every time. Hello. But I feel like they need to embrace that. Uh, bring a Moonsteel Broadsword to him. Yeah, the Moonsteel Broadsword, the, the, uh, the named Murloc has it, right? How cool would it be to have a ring with some stamina on it? Have a good one. How cool would that be? Pretty cool, I say. I could probably bypass the raptors here. Oh dear god. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What am I getting myself into here? I don't need to fight this village, do I? I feel like there were islands where I might have a better time. But then again, maybe I only fight these guys that are like way on the outskirts out here. I, I don't I don't remember this exactly because most of my questing here was after the BC remake of the zone you know they, they didn't remake the zone in bc but they changed it they added lots of quests and i feel like they changed the layout of where the enemies were a little bit i don't remember this huge camp right here i remember being able to walk down the pathway to get to the islands and we can't do that now so we're going to be hunting them on the outskirts Okay, what kind of what kind of guy are you? Are you going to be the kind of guy that runs at us? Are you going to be the kind of guy that throws something at us? I need you to be the kind of guy that comes at us. There you go. It looks like a murloc hell. Absolutely. This is like this is not what you want to look at, right? You don't want to see what seems to be not just a village, but a town, a literal town of murlocs. Usually not what we like to see. Myrfin fungus, movement speed reduced by 50%. Oh, that's good. So while we're chasing the runners or running away, we're going to be very, very slow. That's awesome. Uh, we've got a patroller here we need to grab out.
Alex the Murloc town has hyper spawns. Yeah, you know that doesn't surprise me. Thanks for the heads up. So in Burning Crusade, this guy who has the sword, he would be like right here on the pathway down to the beach. And it doesn't seem like that's where he is in Classic Era. So yeah, I'm kind of wondering, where am I going to find this dude? Or is this quest different in Classic Era? Do you have to get this sword from a blacksmith or on the auction house in Classic Era? This Moonsteel Broadsword. I, th I think eventually the quest got changed so that a murloc drops it. But I don't think that happens in Classic Era. I think you would either need to craft this or buy it from the auction house. If anybody could confirm or deny this, I, I would love to know. The recipe for the sword is in Booty Bay. Yeah, so we so we have to craft it then, because yeah, the, there's no questy marker for the name guy that I'm thinking about, which tells me that he does not exist. Which is fine, we can still do this quest for the heads, it just means we can't do the Jarl Needs a Blade quest. <laughs> you have to have blacksmithing, yeah. And we had blacksmithing, but it never would have been leveled up enough to help with this. You know, we, we weren't leveling it, so... That's okay. It's good for me to know that now, so that I'm not just looking for this guy. Yeah, they must they changed it, and then in BC, you can you can buy it on the auction house or craft it, but you can also just go fight the, the murloc and he'll drop it for you at 100%. He has, he has a name. I don't remember what the name was. But that's okay, we'll just stay out here, and we'll fight these guys for their heads. And that'll be all we have to do. I feel like I can get in there.
we are almost through our hundred moonberry juice. I'm gonna have to get some more water once we're back in town. We still have 14 sweet nectar, so that's helpful. In case we totally run out. <laughs> Ra, I love you, man, and I appreciate you so much, but I don't think we're hitting 39 today. But I appreciate you. I really do. I just don't think I can do it. I'm going to be on here for a little bit more, but ultimately, this afternoon, I, I want to get a quick workout in. I want to spend some time outside with my boy before dinner. And, uh, yeah. I've got... <laughs> I've got a couple of things that I, that I do want to get done this afternoon. But I am going to go for a little bit longer. I'm just not going to go for long enough to uh, to hit 39. But I, I can feel my legs cramping up and today today's leg and shoulder day. So I got to I got to at least do some squats and lunges with my life. Uh, so that I don't have to feel like my legs are atrophying away. Alex, yeah, it probably would be about two more hours, and that would probably be if we were also kind of working on quests. I don't even know if two hours of, like, straight-out grinding would get it. We did get halfway through pretty, like, naturally, you know what I mean? And I like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna at least get this one done and turn this one in, so we're gonna get a little bit farther. Oh, look at that. That's the first ad we've had in a while that's just, like, added mid-combat. I thought we were being pretty safe. Dan, welcome to the stream, man. I appreciate you being here. We, we've had a pretty eventful day. Yeah. We have had some stuff happen. We got a mace upgrade, which is uh, kicking butt for us right now. What else did we get? We got one other upgrade, too. Was it, was it shoulders? Was it boots? I think it was boots. Yeah, we went from a level 12 boot to these boots. So we, we've gotten a couple of pretty solid upgrades today. And we're doing uh, pretty good. You guys are talking about beer. It's 4 It's four p.m. here for me. I can't think about beer yet. It's got to be getting dark. <laughs> the darkness has to be setting in for me to get along that line of thinking. Yeah, that, that time is much better. <laughs> I, I figured it's late. It's much later there for you. 4 p.m. is the perfect time for beer. I mean, on some days it could be. It could be. You know, it's all about what you got going on. I'm about to jump into a workout after this, so probably uh, probably not the time to have a brew. Like, it's not like the best like pre-workout thing to do. If you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's a it's a good post-workout thing to do. Yeah, like if you're just enormous, that you can like have a beer after your workout, and like you probably need the calories. But probably not as like a pre-workout. I don't even think Arnold did it as a pre-workout. I don't know if I can pull these guys out of here. Um, yeah, we, we got him. <laughs> I bet he doesn't do that these days. But yeah, I'm sure when he was like in his 20s and 30s, he probably did. Back in back in the heyday.
I feel like I'm on the light, the lightweight workout routine right now. <laughs> yeah, I should should look into that guy, because uh, yeah, I'm definitely not lifting heavy these days. And, and at my age, I, I probably won't ever go back to lifting heavy like I used to. It's kind of uh, it it becomes kind of pointless after a while. Lale, for me, ridiculously hot, though, would be like any time it's over 78 degrees. That'd be too much opportunity. Too, that's too much of an excuse window for me, you know? Because it gets over 78 a lot. <laughs> but that's like my threshold for too hot. That's my threshold for seriously hot. If it's 80, it's seriously hot, and it needs to stop. We got, we got a break here today, which is kind of why I'm eager to get outside at some point. It's like the high today was like 73 for some reason. We got like a weird cold front. That's kind of sitting on top of us. Oh, uh, that's a that's a stealth spider. Yeah, I saw him. I saw his stealth spider butt. Luckily, he was facing away from us. What do we need? We need like one or two more, right? One more. Who has our last head? Some of these pulls I've done have been a little sketchy, but but they've all worked out so far. But yeah, I admit they have been a little bit sketchy. Yeah, Dan, right now in life, it's just about maintaining what I have and uh, keeping my body held together. You know, the, they say the muscles help hold the body together. It's really the only anti-aging thing that, like, we know works for sure is that if you're looking for anti-aging, you just have to have muscles that hold your body together because the bones and the sinew and shit, like, they're going to get old and age and decay. But muscle, you can actually build up at, at any age. That's what they say. Uh, what did we get? We got Ghost Walker Legs of the Monkey. Very cool. Dan, the camera adds 10 pounds of muscle that I don't have. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm a decently sized human being. Part of that is just being so tall. Being so tall often gives me the appearance of being larger than I am. Uh, the most I ever weighed, even when I was lifting really heavy, I, I got up to 220 pounds. Right now, I'm anywhere between like 196 and 200 is where I sit now. So at some point in my life, in my 20s and early 30s, I had about 20 more pounds of muscle on me. That was mostly, unfortunately, it was mostly upper body. And my, my lower body and upper body are a lot more balanced with now later in life. But like the type of lifting you have to do to like build that kind of muscle, like where you're lifting heavy and you're doing three to five reps, just doesn't really interest me anymore. It's a lot of stress. My joints are getting older, so like my elbow creaks a little bit, and it's just like I have these things that I know that are not gonna last. So I've, I've done well to just kind of cut things back to like 70, 80% of what my max weight would be. And I just kind of hang out in that area. One of those triangle gym guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always had legs, but being a taller person, like, it's hard to work on everything, you know? And it's like, so yeah, my, my legs were not as big as they should have been when my upper body was bigger. And thankfully, over time, you know, over the past 10 years, I've, like, flipped the script on that, like, basically completely. So where, you know, now most of my muscle mass is is in my lower body, where, where it kind of belongs. That's the part that has to hold your body upright. <laughs> I, I had lots of time to learn lots of different lessons over time and I got lucky enough to like while I was learning those lessons I got lucky enough to never injure myself. It doesn't happen that way for everybody. Lael, the way I feel about the gut is like if I can get my chest to stick out past my gut then I'm doing okay. <laughs> I, I, I realize like I'm never gonna have Ryan Reynolds abs so I just try to like strive to a point where like if I can keep my chest out past my gut then I am okay with that. <laughs> Which that has not always been the case but like you know and I started off as a skinnier guy so like a lot of people when they go on a fitness journey it's it's partially to lose weight. When I started my fitness journey it was because I was unhealthily skinny and I was trying literally to gain weight. So I, I started in a wholly different place than a lot of people start.
And when your limbs are long, it's harder to build muscles up in certain areas and have them look the way you might expect. Because a lot of your muscles are just longer by nature. Hey, we got all these guys. We are totally done here. Where does this turn in? Because apparently it doesn't... Oh, it turns in over here to this guy. Okay, okay. Perfect. Let's let's head to the road. We'll just... We'll take the road down. And we'll try to be safe on the road. Rah, man, you're crazy. Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag level 39 limbs. I appreciate it, man. Alright, let's take the road. Let's be safe. Uh, we should be able to just take it to about right there. Maybe we'll even get a map reveal. It would be cool to understand what the terrain is like in this area. If I was super smart, I would have set the Hearthstone back in Theramore. That could have been like really, really clutch for us, and like traveling around quickly could have been could have been really awesome. That being said, though, aside from these two quests, I, I really don't think we're going to be doing anything else here right now. Miles, yeah, absolutely. I I do admire him for his tenacity. He's he wants that that level thirty nine. I want it too, but just not at the cost of the rest of my evening. I, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty, so, now that I, especially now that I got the idea of getting a workout in my head, like I actually like part of my OCD says that that has to happen. Even if it only happens for like 20 minutes, now I actually, it has to happen now. So, yeah. Amy, I appreciate you so much. I, I'm going to be wrapping up soon, I think. Yeah, I, I appreciate you. But I, I do think I'm going to be... I think I'm going to get this turned in and we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. I will need food, absolutely. I just... Right now, I probably am not going to stop and eat until, I, until I'm done with the stream. And I am, I am basically out of coffee, but I, I can't have any more like right now. So I have to, I have to wait on that too. Yeah, it gets into your head. It's it's like anything, any other routine you have that you build up for 20 years is like it literally just sticks to you after a while. And like if you if you miss too many workouts, you will start to feel really bad, like you're doing something wrong, you know. And I've gotten better with it over time. It used to be like I was on a schedule where I was working out like six days a week, like an hour a day. And if I didn't get a workout in, my brain would freak out. Uh, now that I'm older, I I don't have that same reaction. I, I can even go multiple days without working out as long as I'm getting outside to like shoot hoops and go on walks and stuff like that that I can tell my body, hey, you're getting physical activity and parts of you are resting, but parts of you are getting physical activity. So I've, I've gotten a lot better with it as I've gotten older, but definitely in my late 20s, early 30s, it was like working out had become basically an addiction because your, your body literally gets addicted to the endorphins that you, that you create when you, when you lift and when you exercise. Which is good because it gets people into a routine and then they keep that routine, you know. It's bad when it gets to a point where like I was at, where like I would feel like super guilty if I didn't get that workout in six days a week. It just wasn't really like, a, it wasn't a good mentally balanced place to be. Even too much, too much of a good thing can hurt you. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Too much of a good thing can be, can be negatively impactful. Ooh, look at that. 11 strength. Damn. I don't know if those would ever be an upgrade for us over like the 7 strength 6 edge. But maybe. Maybe they would. Thomas, I don't know if I was like ever really a fitness buff. What happened to me was I was I was like 20 years old. I was 6 foot 4. I was like 145 pounds of like absolutely nothing. And I saw an image of myself finally that was this really unhealthy looking person 
And so I, I had to change. I, I had to change that person. And I, and I did that by trying to gain weight. And the only way you can really gain weight when you're super skinny and you have the metabolism that I have is I started to lift weights. So like, yeah, I went on a fitness journey but even to this day, like, I'm not really a fitness buff. You know, I, I eat, like, cold pizza is, like, my go-to. You know, I drink beer. Like, I have lots of bad habits that, like, if I were a fitness buff, I, I would avoid a lot of those bad habits. What I do instead is I, I, I use my workouts as an excuse for some of the other unhealthy habits that I have, you know, as, as a way of, like, alleviating them. I'm like, well, I have these other unhealthy habits. But, you know, I, I weight lift four or five times a week, so I'm balancing things out, and that's kind of what it is. And if I think if I was a real fitness buff, I, I probably would have better habits overall, you know? Because to be fair, being healthy is not just about lifting weights. Like, it's a good thing to do, but there, there's really, like, a lot of other aspects that go into people who are, like, really hardcore into fitness. They do the whole thing, you know, the eating, the dieting the cardio <laughs> like they do all of it you know and I, and I and i don't do all of it i do the parts that appeal to me that i've been able to maintain for 18 years you know like drinking 80 ounces of coffee in a day you know most doctors would tell you just don't do that it's not it's not good for you but that's one of the things that i do so uh, I thought I was looking for another item here. I am looking for another item here. It is... What is it? Is it like a badge on the ground or something? Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. That's Pavel Reef. And there's one more, right? Is it like a footprint? It's a footprint. Yeah, see, the sleep also is where, like, I don't diet and I don't sleep good. <laughs> And that is definitely very impactful on my health. Okay, so we got those things. Maybe we do need to get back to a Theramore. What is this? Razorix Tweaking Sephorium Booster. Okay, we're not going to worry about that now. Oh, oh, yeah, Shifty. Absolutely. Oh, and I do. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't feel too guilty about the stuff that I do. I just know that, like, a, a doctor's opinion would be for me to cut some of it out. You know what I mean? I have to remind myself, it's like, it's okay to indulge yourself in things. It's not okay to, 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 to delude yourself about things. Yeah, that's what it is. It's okay to, like, say, you know, I'm okay with doing this. It's different to say, this is an okay thing to do. It's, like, different. Like, I'm okay doing these things, but do I think it is the okay thing to do? Not really. Would I advise anyone else to drink 80 ounces of coffee in a day? No, I'd be like, are you crazy? Don't drink that much coffee. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm okay with it for myself, but it's like, I have to acknowledge that it's not the way. That's all. And then I can be okay stepping off the way. Yeah, Miles, that's a good point. Moderation, right? Moderation is, is everything in moderation is can be okay, right? And, I, and I'm not saying that all the things I do are moderated well. That's that's the other problem. They're probably not as moderated as I could get them to be. <laughs> Zach, do you drink at least 60 ounces of black coffee every day? Visited my fiance's grandparents a few weeks ago and they were horrified. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. They're like, hey, that's a lot of coffee. That's a lot of coffee. Right, right, exactly. Thomas, I don't, I don't go to Starbucks. Yeah, I just have at home coffee. Now, I think sometimes we buy like Starbucks coffee beans. You know, I have like, I think we've had some medium roast stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I don't make my way out to an actual Starbucks a lot these days. The closest one to where I live is like a mile and a half up the road. Now, when I was like commuting to an office and stuff, then I would be more prone. We, we had a Starbucks. We had a coffee shop in the lobby of the office. I don't remember if it was a Starbucks now. But that would have been the time when I was more prone. And then it would have been just, a, it would have been a, a large coffee. And yeah, I say large and not grande. It would have been just a large coffee with a little bit of cream. I'm not like a big uh, coffee drink person. I, in my mind, like coffee should taste like coffee. 
and so I've never been a big fan of like the sweeteners or the iced coffee drinks or the cafe mocha latte cappuccinos like I, I don't I don't do all that stuff I'm a very boring person and uh, yeah so I, I grind my own beans and I just make coffee mm-hmm Yeah, exactly, Lael. Yeah, we get we pick up the veranda blend sometimes, or just the medium roast. Sometimes we try caribou coffee. Right now, I'm I'm, I'm drinking a coffee called Jermac. Jermac is it's like a local Michigan coffee beanery, and that's what I'm drinking right now. It's like a local blend. And yeah, I like to I like to have the whole beans and grind them up myself. I feel like the coffee probably stays fresher longer like that. Shifty, you're at four Red Bull every day. That's probably a lot of Red Bull. Yeah, I, n I never really got into like energy drinks. Every once in a while, if I know that I really want like a boost of energy at night, I'll have like half a can of Red Bull. And since I never drink Red Bull, it it's awesome because then when I do drink it, it's actually super effective. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, if I drink it all the time, it probably would not have the kick I want it to when I do drink it. So I kind of like having it, like, on reserve. So, like, every once in a while, I'll have a sugar-free Red Bull and I'll drink, like, half the can. And then it's, like, it's super impactful. And I, I kind of like to keep it that way. So I typically stay away from energy drinks. And uh, as a kid, I had to cut out soda because I, I had some blood sugar issues. I, I was hypoglycemic, so... Any kind of sugar would basically propel my metabolism at, to an alarming pace. And so from like when I was 17 or 18 on, I, I had to kind of stop drinking soda. Like cold turkey, I remember having to stop drinking soda cold turkey. And before that, I drank a shit ton of soda. <laughs> it was basically all I drank. And then they were like, yeah, you can't, you can't have soda anymore if you don't want to become a diabetic someday. So I listened. And I, I don't drink soda. We don't even have soda in the house, you know. Growing up, in, in my house growing up, we had soda all the time. We had, we had, we had Fago Cola in Michigan, and we called soda pop. So if you, if you grew up in Michigan or even like Ohio, you, you call soda pop. You call it pop. <laughs> and then you go somewhere else, you're like, oh, I'm going to order a pop. And someone's like, what the fuck is a pop? And you're like, oh, it, it's like, it's like a soda. It is soda. <laughs> it's any soda. We just call it pop because we're stupid. MJ, thanks for being here today. We'll see you next time. You call it pop in Indiana. Yeah, I think it's an Ohio, Michigan, Indiana trifecta. Maybe even part of Illinois. In Nashville, it's all called Coke. No, <laughs> no, Jason. <laughs> it can't be all called Coke. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like, yeah, I want a Coke. And by Coke, you can mean Pepsi, you can mean Dr. Pepper. Like, what kind of Coke do you want? Well, I want a Coke, you know? Miles, thanks so much, man. Yeah, F bombs. We, got, we had a lot of F bombs earlier. Were you here for like the ton of F bombs I dropped? I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Johnny, you call it all Coke too? Okay, yeah. See, Coke is Coca-Cola to me. If somebody asks for a, a Coke, I will say, like, if you ask me for a Coke, I'm going to give you dark pop, right? You're going to get Pepsi, or you're going to get Coca-Cola, or you're going to get RC Cola, or you're going to get, like, dark pop Fago. Like, if you asked me for a Coke, I would make sure to give you a dark pop, right? If you Same thing if you asked me for a cola. Like, if you wanted a cola, I'd give you either Pepsi or Coca-Cola, whatever I had. But I feel like, you know, you're saying, what, what if it was like an orange soda? Would you call that Coke? Like, would you be like, uh, I want a Coke. Make it an orange, make it an orange soda. Or, or does Coke apply just to dark cola? This is a really important conversation we're having. So I, I want these answers. Yeah, in Illinois, it was pop, right? right. Yeah, it's, it's the Michigan, Ohio, Indiana trifecta of like, we call it pop for some reason. 
I think because like you know like the bubbles pop you know what I mean it's a very like Neanderthal way of thinking about the beverage because like when you pour it you see the bubbles popping so like, oh it is pop we call this pop and like <laughs> to me it's always been like a really like just like a low brain way of thinking about it but that's what I grew up with Insane Clown Posse and the Jugglers are keeping Fago alive, probably. Michigan is keeping Fago alive. <laughs> I'll have a large Coke. They ask what kind. You say Sprite. Yeah. It'd be the same thing with Pop. We'd be like, I want I want a Pop. I'll, I'll take a Sprite. I'll take an Orange. But uh, these days I refer to it like properly because I've lived in a different, a few different places in the country. So like, yeah. I call If it's Cola, it's Dark Pop. If it's any other kind of pop, I call it soda. So I try to like, I try to use the vernacular that's more accepted across more of the country. Yeah, if someone asked for Coke, you'd think they were talking about cocaine. Yeah, and, and you know, historically, even if you were getting a Coca-Cola, historically, you wouldn't be too far off base by thinking you might be getting something illicit <laughs> because back in the day uh, There was a chance that you you were getting something illicit in your coca-cola absolutely Back in the day Greetings 1350 775 Need help? And 700. Bless you. <laughs> Thomas, yeah. It, it basically was called that because it had that in it. Mm -hmm. I, it's not an old wives tale from what I understand from what I understand early, early in the production of coca-cola That was something that happened. Yeah Absolutely something that happened we missed a turn in we did miss it. I did not even see this guy. Can I help you? There we go 320 see you later And another one talk to this guy five feet away again. Perfect. Perfect. Light be with you. All right For the Alliance all right, guys, we are not going to get level 39 today, as I've been saying for a long time, but it's been a really good stream. I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. We made some good progress today. We got an awesome weapon. Thank you, Alex, for pointing us towards that. We got a huge upgrade with the boots. So yeah, overall, it's been a really great day. Thank you guys so much for being here for it. I don't know if I'll be getting on later today to do anything in Wrath or anywhere else. Uh, maybe though, maybe we'll have an evening stream. I'd like to do another fishing stream, but I just don't know when, but maybe. And if not today, then I will see you guys back here tomorrow afternoon. Thank you all again. And as always, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. We'll see you back in Azeroth sometime soon. Bye for now.